Okay, it's uh, 7.02 p.m. I'm going to call the Town of Bay Harbor Islands uh, regular council meeting to order. It's February 13, 2017. Um, if everyone could please rise uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to yes, ask uh, Harry. Uh, where's Harry? Come on up. You have the honor tonight to do the pledge? Good. No, there we go, it takes a second. Um, you know, every month we typically ask students to come here, and so when Councilman Solver made the, the reference, uh, you know, it kind of, we normally don't have employees or, or individuals do this. Normally it's it's a special occasion for to ask somebody to do something that, because they've done something special in the community. And today we're going to recognize Harry Chinko, who's one of our town employees. For those of you that don't know, Harry um, used to work over at the toll booth and then also now uh, works at the uh, Scott Winters Park. Uh, he's the intendant there. And how long have you been with the town? Uh, Eleven years. And the reason why Harry's here is not because he's worked here 11 years. The reason why Harry's here is because Harry did something really extraordinary and it really calls attention to the type of employees that we have here. Um, you know, it's interesting because Harry's the kind of guy, he's a great guy, but he's not the type of person that toots his own horn. And when I heard what he had done, um, I thought it was appropriate to, uh, to give him the type of recognition that he really deserves. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of individuals that live in our town that are elderly. And unfortunately, those people get taken advantage of on occasion. A lot of times, uh, we all know that people um, call up and they say, you need to send the money quick, otherwise we're going to arrest you, or we're going to take you to jail, and all things like that. And sometimes people pray to that, and they make money off of it. And Harry happens to be someone who listens to people. And he heard about that happening to someone. And the person didn't know what was going on. They thought it was real. And as it turned out, that individual, they had already taken $1,500 out of this person's bank account. And she had already was going to the bank to take out another $50,000. And because of Harry, and only because of Harry, they contacted our police department. Our detectives went over to the bank and stopped the transfer. And he saved this woman $50,000. And for that, the guy that works in the park just shows that all of our employees are special. And Harry, thank you so much on behalf of all of us. That really was an incredible thing. And to, again, not tuning his own horn, this happened a year ago. To think that, you know, most people would be the first ones to say, look what I did. He's just a great guy. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. Thank you, Harry. This is on, on behalf of the town. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, take a picture. Okay, on three, one, two, and three, one more, and three. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jakey, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Harry. For some of the people in the audience, Harry was, when we had a toll plaza, Harry was the assistant director uh, in the toll plaza, and when we closed down, we tried to keep some of our best employees to transfer over, and uh, Harry was one of them. And uh, he started off working at the parks, and he's been now he's, he's in charge basically of overseeing all the parks and making sure they're clean and they're they're, they're closing on time, and then that there's no vandalism and the kids are playing nicely, and he does a great job of it. So thank you. Right. Also, before we do, thank you. Also, before we do roll call, I, I do have some, some bad news, unfortunately. Um, it's just been brought to our attention that former mayor at Tavlin just passed away. And uh, that's uh, it's a good person. 
Good to have Ted Kaplan, so former mayor. And um, I'd like to have a moment of silence and, and honor of him for his uh, service to our town. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to start with roll call. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Yaffe. Here. Councilmember Tricotin. He's not here. Councilmember Sava. Here. Councilmember Reed. Here. Councilmember Fuller. Here. Vice Mayor Bruder. Here. Mayor Lerner. Here. We have a quorum. Great. Thank you. All right, number one, we have Dave Caserta, our lobbyist. Come on up. There you go. Welcome back. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and the incredibly wonderful people of the uh, town of the Harbor Islands. Uh, my name is Dave Caserta, and I am very proud to be able to continue to come up here and say that I represent all of you and uh, all of your interests in Tallahassee. Uh, we have a very interesting year. We're here tonight, as you know, for our uh, traditional um, pre-session briefing, uh, which uh, we will uh, I had sent, uh, and that's on your table, I think, today, just some of the bills that are uh, starting to pop up uh, that have some kind of an impact on municipal government, uh, but also this meeting is more importantly for uh, me to listen to all of you and see what some of your thoughts are as to what you'd like to be looking out for up in Tallahassee. So in uh, saying that, I want to uh, let you know a uh, couple things uh, real quick that pop out on that list that you have, and you can go ahead and, and uh, tonight, tomorrow, whenever you can, just take a look at it, see what interests you. Uh, also, give me a call. Each one of you has my number, and I'll be happy to talk with you on each individual issue as well. Uh, but some of the ones that pop out, uh, Senate Bill 330, which is uh, basically prohibiting local governments from imposing and adopting certain regulations on business professions or business tax, which uh, a good thing, though, is that they uh, it, it only uh, doesn't apply to municipalities that already have an ordinance in place, and I'm pretty sure you all do. Uh, but it does, um, however, try to limit uh, that tax to about $25. And so that's something that we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, because I know based on the various, you know, uh, businesses and, and, and size that it fluctuates. So we're going to take a look at that uh, issue as it moves to the process. It hasn't really gone anywhere yet, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. It's relatively early in the process. Uh, second is the uh, vacation rentals, which always keeps popping up every other year, every year, whatever you want to call it. But uh, uh, same language as last year. The only thing is that they've taken out actually regulate the duration and frequency of rental vacations. Uh, they've taken out that line and one of the bills, but those bills are just filed. They've only been assigned to committees. They haven't really been assigned to, to actually to a hearing. So as they get moving, if they get moving, I will let you know. They traditionally haven't done well uh, at all up there. We've done a good job in trying to address that, uh, that issue. Um, what I do want to tell you as well is uh, the appropriations process has changed significantly. As you've probably heard in the media, uh, the uh, new administration has set some, especially on the House side, some real intense rules for following the appropriations process. In fact, this year, unlike any other, what happens is uh, they're requiring you to fill an extensive application out. Uh, then you have to get the sponsor. The sponsor then has to review it, and then they actually have to file of that and once it's filed it gets assigned and it becomes a bill it's never happened this way it actually becomes a bill so your appropriations are a single standing bill that will then get assigned to a committee and potentially heard in the committee and the requirement is as long as it's filed then we're eligible to be discussed throughout the process, especially in conference at the end, which is, as you all know, when the budgetary process really takes uh, impact, effect. And, uh, but considering, though, that you have a Senate side that's not following those rules, that's going to be a very interesting session this year. Who knows? It might be there for a, a, a while. We had a year off. We might have a year on this year. But uh, always looking forward to it. But I do want to... Uh, say thank you to the manager and assistant manager because those applications were pretty <laughs> intense and you did a great job in getting them on time. We have uh, submitted them on time. Our sponsors for both the uh, town police facility expansion, <clears throat> which I know is of great interest uh, to you, Councilman, uh, and also the uh, town sewer <clears throat> lateral lining. Uh, which we've been working on, which is important, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But those two have been filed. Our House sponsors are Representative Geller, and our Senate sponsor is Senator Campbell. And I know you all look forward to work, uh, working with both of them, uh, Mr. Manager and uh, Assistant Manager. Um, the water project, which we're considering the sewer lining, is, is something that we spoke to the budget chair and a couple others, and they're, they're really 
looking out for water parties. They, they consider those having a significant statewide impact, even though they're localized. So it looks like we might have good discussions on that project this year. And so I look forward uh, when many of you come up, uh, as you know, we'll go ahead and sit in front of uh, the decision makers and several members of the committees that will be uh, affecting our decisions. And, and we'll, we'll get a chance to really uh, talk about that project and how important it has been uh, over the years to get it done quickly. Um, Having said that, that's pretty much a, a brief overview of where we're at and to give you the comfort that we have done what we're supposed to do on, on the appropriation side. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to you all to see uh, what are some of the things that you'd like for us to look out for. Um, medical marijuana, yes. I'd like to know the guidelines of where, you know, what are going to be the restrictions, where they're going to allow to have them, what about being near schools, uh, well, here's the process, and thank you, because I, I should have brought that up, because that's something I would spoken to JC about uh, that, that's important, because, as you know, Amendment uh, 2 uh, went ahead and passed this year, which uh, legalized and allowed uh, medicinal uh, marijuana for medicinal purposes. And so what's happening now is the Department of Health is given the, the uh, obligation to regulate, which means that they have to make recommendations, but the legislature has to promulgate and come up with the rules, and so they are now currently getting ready to do that. There's a couple bills that have been filed all over the place. Obviously, one is saying let's expand the provider list uh, that was established a couple years ago when, when a similar version passed uh, uh, for, for the... Uh, um, and so, so basically, as it relates to municipal government, we're going to want to look out for the ability for the state not to preempt us from going ahead and, and, and regulating the zoning of land or for uh, creating uh, the uh, variances uh, for uh, where these um, potential facilities might go. And so that's something that we're going to have to take a look at, but we're not going to know until that language gets a little clearer in the uh, in Should we prepare system. ourselves then to have something ready to go in which we have our own um, set of, you know, guidelines, guidelines that for because I know, I know one of the concerns, too, is making sure that these facilities are near, not near schools. Um, you know, that's right. something Anything I know is near schools. But, that's yeah. Yeah. Well, but everywhere you're going, yeah. It's right. Right. So essentially, we're trying to grandfather ourselves in is really the best we can do. Yeah, I mean, there's an item on, on, on tonight for Arezzo supporting um, uh, the school board's initiative to have a, um, a restriction. Uh, you know, some municipalities have um, a temporary moratorium, but again, it's, it's a moot point because no one can actually do it anyway because I haven't created the rules yet. Right. Uh, it's you know the prudent thing is to see how they're doing it, and then be able to legislate appropriately once we see what's kind of going on the table. I mean that's probably I mean that's really what everyone's doing. The only difference is some people have done this moratorium, but again, there's no there's nothing to have a moratorium for. Well, and that's yeah. it, because I know with the Florida League of Cities, there are several cities and stuff that have already tried to do come some kind of implication. I'm going to do some research on that, and I will definitely get back mm -hmm. with the manager and assistant manager as well, and as well as with any of you, to see how we progress with this. But, yeah, it's, a, it's just something to keep out there and keep in your mind as to how we want to address this as the rules are promulgated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Dave, you. Dave, i got a question, a couple yes, questions sir. for you. First of all, um, as far as the water projects, obviously getting them through the legislature has not been our biggest barrier. The biggest barrier is the veto pen. Um, what are your, is your read this year as far as from the governor's office? Is it, I mean, I mean, if any, right now. It's, I know it's premature potentially, but have you heard anything as to whether or not he's going to let anything through? Because that's really been our Yeah, he, he's going to, I mean, he always has to have, let things through. I mean, you know, he's already having some issues himself with, with his budget proposal. And right. as you saw in the House the other day, they, they really, you know. <laughs> well, just the issue is that just for every people to understand, we've had things get through before just yes. to be vetoed. I just don't, I'm just well, trying to understand what's going to be. Some, some though, we've gone and uh, we've been successful in. So, and, and I think that's the same for most <clears throat> any other municipalities throughout the Absolutely. state. But we, Absolutely. We, I think the important element is when we do go up, as we, as you know, we're a very active community and you all are up there. Uh, I think that 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 one on one, when they hear from the actual leaders from the, of, the, of the municipality to talk about the importance of the project, I think that helps. And I think this year. You know, we'll probably set up a meeting with uh, the appropriate folks in the governor's office just so that they understand, right. especially this one particular project, how important uh, it really is. One, one other thing, I mean, just in general, obviously you, you brought our attention to, to Senate Bill 330 and everything. You know, in the past, a lot of the issues that have affected our community, any bill that we didn't like, essentially the Senate became the firewall. Do you still read that as the way this year? Because some of the things, like, you know, at least that are being reported, uh, are that certain things that in the past have not gotten through Senate 
look like they're slipping through. Yeah, well, what do you yeah, mean I, this time? I think you can see clearly that there is a firewall up this year between the House and Senate um, on, on many issues, especially process, the appropriations process. Uh, the House is going after a lot of economic development uh, elements. Uh, which, you know, the Senate is like, you know, I mean, this is a job, those are job creating packages, you know, so th th there's going to be a battle and, uh, and, and I think a lot of the things that we've traditionally, they've continuously tried to push that uh, put it, uh, have a disadvantage to the municipalities. We've been somewhat successful at, at defeating one way or another, so I, I still foresee that continuing to happen and yeah, I think the Senate has always been it's an easier to Thank you. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, well, there are some bills, I, I mean, I'll just say for the record that, you know, any bill that, that takes away home rule from us is obviously something that, that is a concern for, for our town. Um, you know, we should support home rule and support um, the rights of municipalities to, to govern ourselves because, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's local. So, uh, you know, that's always, and there's a couple bills this year that, that in essence, take that, that right away. So. Any other questions? Anyone? All right, here none. Thanks so much, Dave. I appreciate it. Any other questions? We're good. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, my way is Alex. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, next, we have requests for withdrawals, deferments, future agenda items. Uh, anyone want to start off? I'd like to put something on the agenda. Sure. Um, I know that we've been talking about the meters and changing out the meters to um, JC. Do you think that next month we can put it um, on the agenda, please, so that we can finalize the issues with the meters? Absolutely. We have been already working with Vaughn. We have a presentation. We're, we're getting prepared for next month. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, pull off the uh, consent. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 3A, B, 3A, 3B, and number 8. 3A, 3B, <laughs> and number 8. We're going to want to take out 3A as well. The uh, minutes and number, and number eight. 8. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I wanted to pull out number 5. Number 5. Okay. And, and I would also like to pull um, number 6 and number 7. <laughs> no, uh, it's just then. five to seven, eight, and, and, and six eight, and eight. seven. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. So we've got okay. three items. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. And then yeah, we, in short, we have no more consent. Yeah. Well, I got two. Three, but, three. And then also, um, I have an item that I'm pulling, um, number um, 15, I'd like to bring back next month because um, the, the parks and uh, the county parks director has left and there's a new director and they haven't synced up the deal yet because uh, this would hypothetically be a deal between us and the county along with Bow Harbor, Surfside, and Sinales Beach. So I, I didn't want to bring this to you until I actually have something uh, interlocal, something we can talk about and show the benefits. Right, and when you bring it back, Jordan, yeah. uh, I would appreciate seeing um, like a, a diagram yeah. or pictures that you can actually see. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> more, yeah, a little bit more, yeah. uh, a little bit more information. No, it was, no, no. no it, yeah. Although, but it was better than really the, uh, the whole thing, the whole proposal is concrete. Yeah. It was better than the picture we got in number 11. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you can see there was a car there. <laughs> so, all right. So, so anything else for? Uh, future agenda item. Okay, future. Um, I talked to uh, Marlene and her capacity as code compliance director um, about the noise that's generated from some new construction emergency backup generators. And uh, in my opinion, I, I observed uh, some of it and it's significant. So I would like to look at that. And we had looked at the noise ordinance and kind of went away. So I'd like to bring that back, please. We'll discuss that. Okay, anything else? Uh, we'll move on to the town manager's report. I'd like to bring Dan Brayer up from uh, BY Mellon to his report. Dan, always great to see you. Thank you very much. Dan Brayer from BNY Mellon Wolf Management, representing uh, performance results through December 31st, 2016. The average current yield of the town's portfolios is 2.30%, a benchmark of 2.42%. Yield to maturity or yield to call of 1.90%. The benchmark is at 2.11. And the average duration of the town's portfolios is 3.67 years. The index is at 4.05 years. 
For 2016, the contingency fund was up 1.30%. The uh, general fund was up 1.31%. And the water fund was up 1.30%. Uh, index was up 2.08. Annualized since inception, the contingency fund is up 456 the general fund, 4.59, and the water fund, 4.73, benchmark of 4.79. At this point, I'll open it up to any questions. Any questions? Yeah, Dan, actually, um, last time we met up here, I would asked you if you would just prepare a short memo for us. Um, we never got the memo. I'm going to ask again, if you okay. would, please, just on the fact that you know rates have changed significantly over the last year, especially in the last several months. Um, the effect it's going to have on our bond portfolio and so forth. That's all I was asking. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can comment a little bit on that, particularly the fourth quarter. Sure. Um, fourth quarter, especially post-election, um, when the stock market kind of took off, there was a big sell-off in the bond market. So um, you see, uh, you saw a rise in the 10-year Treasury of about 85 basis points. So bond portfolios came down quite a bit in the fourth quarter. So what we're doing there, again, in the town's portfolios, as I've noted in my letters, is we're maintaining a short duration relative to the benchmark to defend against that. It doesn't make the portfolios immune to that, right? So the town's portfolios in the fourth quarter actually were, were down. Right. So we still generated positive yields for the year, but we did come down for the fourth quarter. So, you know, to the extent rates continue to go up, it's just a matter of at what pace. So if we see a gradual pace of yields coming up, then the portfolio should be able to feather fairly well through that. Uh, if rates, if yields come up strong, that's where you'll see significantly more volatility. Well, I think that's, you know, what we talked about last time, I guess three months ago, and then, you know, the fact that we knew rates were going to start coming up and obviously it was going to affect us. And, you know, at the same time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Isaac, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you also uh, asked a question with regard to, you know, potentially rebalancing a little bit what we're able to do. But anything that you, you know, if there's still a recommendation to maintain as is without any other re rebalance, so be it. But if you do believe that maybe we should look at something else, I know we're restricted by what we can do, but if there's any way to rebalance within those requirements that you think is a little bit more secure for the money of the town, you know, we'd appreciate that sentiment. Sure. Uh, I can tell you that given your investment policy statement, uh, you know, as generally as secure as bonds are, you guys take it to another level of security. Um, it's, it's a very... Uh, what, how should I say, uh, conservative, conservative uh, investment policy statement. And when I did an analysis last time, I worked with Alan on this. You know, the, the main reason why the town isn't considering changes, primarily Alan, and, and I agree with it, is, you know, it's one thing to experience a, a negative quarter of, you know, one and a half, one point eight percent 1.8%. But what the town really cannot afford is the volatility of the equity markets where you may go down 5% in a month. Right. We, so we agree with that. I, mean, yeah. I think that's the general sentiment. It's just the only thing is if there was something that you thought that we should potentially look at because rates are going up, because everybody knows they're going up, yes. they're going to continue to go up, whether there's two more rate changes this year, three rate, whatever it is, you know, just any recommendation that you can put would help be helpful for us. Absolutely. Be happy to do that. And the only hedge we have against rising interest rates is the duration of our portfolio, right? That's correct. Yes. All right. There's not a lot of latitude there. <laughs> but, if this, but if this recommendation is to, you know, slightly off, you know, depending. I mean, we may want to stay exactly as we are, but it doesn't hurt to get a recommendation. Yeah, and I think it's important for you guys to know that the, the portfolio is actively managed. Yeah. Yeah. So as, you know, yields continue to rise, we will take advantage of that and at some point extend duration to take advantage of higher yields over longer periods of time. But our term is pretty short. It's, it's two plus years, so uh, it's three point six seven. Oh, three point six seven. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so I would I would I would anticipate it would stay relatively short for the foreseeable future, but over time, right, as as yields pick up to a more reasonable level, that's when we'll start to look to well, extend further out. It's done us well in the past, so being that's conservative correct. has not hurt us. So, all right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Not. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. You're welcome. Thanks. Right. Mayor, I just, I just have a few things. One, I'd just like to thank the council for your support and coming to the employee recognition dinner the other night. Um, uh, it was a nice night for the employees to recognize, be recognized, and just you know have have something for for them. A special thanks to the police department, Lou Hamilla and Willie Perez, and Jill Dellison, who really worked on the police side, of putting their putting this together, and of course Bridget Moran. Uh, was on our side doing doing our awards. 
This doesn't, this doesn't come off with also the support of the Broad Foundation and the John Bustle, the, the Bustle family and the Broad Foundation. Uh, John Bustle was there and so was Anita Broad's son, uh, Anthony, yeah, which was nice. Uh, and they really did enjoy it. I heard back from both of them and they said it was, it was very nice and they were very glad that they made it. Um, and we also have our, our, we don't have the police officer of the year, but we do happen to have the employee of the year here tonight, Albert Chang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she kind of hides out over there, but she's very, very, very important to us, and she did a great job last year. Uh, if anybody's been driving over the uh, ICW, you, you noticed that when we did the uh, asphalt thing, there was, um, it looked like cracks in the, uh, in the, in the bridge. That was to be expected. Those are the expansion joints. They started work on those today. Um, it's a, it's an epoxy uh, cement mix. Um, I, they did. They finished the first one today. It was it was done very well. It's a little time consuming, and uh, there's a lot of expansion joints. So they'll be working for the next couple, next two weeks or so. Uh, hopefully, doing double shifts uh, and getting that done. I drove over the first one today. It was perfect. So very happy about that. I'm happy to report that JC was able to convince uh, the designer of the message boards we spoke about last month to actually turn over their technical specs so that we can actually go out and get a bid or from like construction drawings. So we expect that to go out and it was a, it was a nice job. Um, thank you. The last thing was we did some of the gutter work. We spoke about it a, a meeting or two ago. We did the, on the south side of the West Island, we did the gutter and some cement work. We did about 400 linear feet. The work was very good. Um, the quality of the, the the replacement was excellent. And I would like to continue and just finish what we started. They did about 400 linear feet. We have about 450 more to do. That's to complete everything that we need, and then we can go to asphalt. So it's about another $17,000, $18,000 worth of work. Still well under our budget of $50,000. So. That's okay with everybody. Yeah, I'm okay. And that's and that's really all I have. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go now to council reports. I start with Council Member Reed. Start first. Well, um, I was privileged to attend yet another employee recognition awards. It was very nice to see the police department and the general employees together. And it's also times when uh, we can forget about politics and rank structure and just enjoy people who many of whom are neighbors in our community and uh, let our hair down a little bit and enjoy some good music and a good salsa. <laughs> Isaac? I just ditto what uh, Kelly said. It was great being there and being with the, the employees, the rank and file and the cops. And it was it was good, good vibe. Very, very nice. I'm proud to be associated with this organization. Right. All right. Josh, continue the same thing. It was an honor to be at the dinner. I think everybody just had a great time, and it was good to see everyone. Right. Bob? I share the same sentiments. It's a great annual event. Uh, I think Ron and the Chief are you know, uh, bringing this event to us a number of years ago, and uh, look forward to it continuing. And Stephanie? <laughs> so I want to talk about the seniors. I want to, if you're... Um, to say that if you haven't joined the community center or been by the community center, there is a lot going on there for seniors as well as for children. So, you know, right, and teenagers. Um, the seniors today had a movie with popcorn. They're doing knitting classes, Spanish classes. I mean, there's a lot of fun activities. So if you know of a senior who's sitting at home alone or needs a place to go, please forward them to the community center because there's maybe some misconception that it's only for kids and teenagers, but there are classes for seniors as well as adults. And, um, you know, it's a great afternoon. So if you know somebody, you know, who's in an apartment by themselves or wants to, new to the community, it's a way for them to mingle and to get to know each other. And if you're a parent with a child, there are plenty of classes and opportunities as well as, you know, an opportunity to go to the library. Um, and um, thank you. Also want to mention, um, um, I attended the last uh, League of Cities meeting, 
and also had the privilege of attending the Bow Harbor's uh, 70th uh, anniversary and uh, acknowledge uh, Council Member Salver's son is uh, elected in Bow Harbor and we will always have a special relationship with Bow Harbor. They've worked well with us for so many years, but uh, particularly now, you know, we, have a, we have a good voice over there. So, <laughs> My uh, dog last night. <laughs> <laughs> so they might not like that. Just a few fine work there. Uh, but, uh, no, no discount on Carpaccio. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that being said, uh, we're going to move on to public comment. I will say for the record, for those individuals that, that um, are new to our meetings, um, public comment uh, is for anything not on the agenda. So if you want to speak on any item on the agenda, it's not for public comment because you can speak on any individual item. So we're going to call you up in the order that it came in. Uh, Joel... Um, Joel Simmons. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the council. My name is Joel Simmons. I represent Bay Harbor Hotel LLC, uh, 9601 East Bay Harbor Drive. Uh, I'm appearing here tonight to make an appeal to you, which I hope you'll be able to look on favorably. Uh, we're working hard to progress the construction of our project, and uh, while we understand that the 9 a.m. construction start time was introduced to make the lives of people in Bay Harbor uh, more peaceful, uh, it, it seems to be causing some unintended consequences in the town. Uh, we commented during the, our permitting process that the hour lost at the beginning of the day in the construction industry is not just an hour. Now we've lived it, the exponential impact of the lost hour and the addition to total construction time are ultimately causing more disturbance rather than less. When workers can't get onto site until 9 a.m., they simply go and work in Miami, Miami Beach, Surfside, Bell Harbor, Sunny Isles, North Miami, etc., where they can start and finish early to avoid traffic and working in the heat. An inability to attract qualified workers causes serious delay. Those that will work here are working further into the heat of the day and are less efficient, compounding the problem. When deliveries can't arrive before 9 a.m., it means they're on the second delivery of the day. When traffic is heavier and they don't arrive until 11 a.m., this results in three hours of lost work. Contractors will either raise their prices or work elsewhere, but the results are the same. An extended construction period and more traffic at the busiest time of the day. And that can't be good for anyone. Sadly, the 6 p.m. finish time doesn't compensate for the lost time at the start of the day. The industry will not start late and they won't finish late. Uh, and the workers have an abundance of choice right now. So we're forced to wind down operations much earlier than the official end time and accept more lost time at the end of the workday. And now with daylight saving, despite the use of lights, our productivity is further reduced in the last, day, uh, the last hour. And frankly, that was the final nail in the coffin that's actually brought me here today. Not only does the increased time and traffic impact the town but so does the additional cost, which developers will either seek to pass on to the consumer or there will be a reluctance for developers to bring buildings to the town. Even those who seek a more restricted development environment are concerned about affordability. I'd like to say that uh, Ron and his team are working with us within the framework uh, that's been set to help us when emergencies arise and we're grateful for their assistance. But the difficulties we're facing have pushed us to the point where we need to appeal to the town to allow us to start at 8 a.m. For you, this is not about cost. It's about trying to finish these construction projects within a sensible, within a sensible time frame, limit disturbance, and bring in their tax revenue for the benefit of the whole town. The town already has sites working from 8 a.m., which were grandfathered in under previous regulations. Prior to coming here, we spoke to our neighbors who understand the logic of our request. While I'm requesting a permanent change to 8 a.m., if this is not possible, then please consider it during daylight saving. I sincerely hope this request makes sense to you and it's something you can support. Just one further comment, if you don't mind. By coincidence today, code enforcement came around and asked us if there is any way that we can get our deliveries earlier. This wasn't planned. It just happened today. The answer is only if we start earlier. All right. Thank, thank you, you for your thank comments. You. Right. Victor Meyer. Victor Maya, 1155 103rd Street. Just for clarification, is item number eight going to come up for discussion, or is it totally been withdrawn? No, we're not discussing. No, it's for discussion. For discussion. Okay, so so then I'll move on. Um, I do have some concerns about item 9.5, the donation to the PTA. Um, 
sort of in conjunction with uh, the uh, Bay Harbor Islands news waves. Uh, and at the last uh, emergency uh, council meeting, a comment was made about uh, using the town council uh, for electioneering purposes. And there was an allegation made, uh, which I thought was completely and utterly uh, contemptible, uh, that questions regarding the uh, uh, bid process uh, were a result of trying to uh, endear potential voters uh, on elections. This is electioneering at its greatest, okay? There is no question about it. Uh, that's what's happened here. And for all of the maneuvering that our mayor has done over the last years in terms of helping individuals with elections and forming this council, one thing that he didn't control or he can't control is the fact that at the next election cycle, not this year but next year, he is running all by himself. And a result of that, uh, it's just basically a referendum on him and nobody else. Hence, you have proposals about pools. You have all of a sudden donations to the PTA uh, and the amount of $1,000 that's being presented today and a whole bunch of other uh, items, you know, uh, being done uh, primarily, in my opinion, uh, to make himself a better candidate uh, when he is uh, up for re-election the following year. Uh, and I think it's contemptible. Uh, the PTA is a political organization. Uh, if, in fact, we have a, a situation where this town believes that donating $1,000 to the school for uh, uh, computer equipment is something that's in the best interest of this town, then make the donation straight to the school. There's no reason to make it to the PTA. There was no budget presented, uh, no, no um, uh, uh, finance sheet or finance report of the PTA and how much money the PTA has, how they generate the money, where it's going, how it's going, how, what are their plans you know, for this thing. So this donation to the PTA, I think, is wrong. I think to have it on the consent agenda is wrong. I think it's merely just a way of our mayor trying to uh, engender himself. Uh, to uh, the PTA uh, and um, and other uh, uh, individuals associated uh, with the school, and I think it's wrong. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I still have a few more times. Changing the construction hours, I think, is absolutely positively wrong. Uh, there is more traffic that's going to be generated, and you gave uh, you gave him a, a little bit of extra time on this point, so I appreciate the same courtesy to myself. One more second. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Eight o'clock school traffic and all of the traffic in, uh, that is associated with school is, is at its peak. You know, during those times, we've had a lot of consternation with all of the development in this town. I don't think that we need to uh, talk about extending uh, the construction hours any further. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Collins. I will say for the record, um, I can't remember how many years it's been that we've made an annual donation to the school PTA long before I've ever sat on this council. Um, I don't know how it ever came up where I was the one that started bringing it up. I, I think I started a couple of years ago, but someone did it before me and someone did it before that person. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Mayor Silver started. Yeah, there you go. I mean, many, many so, years you know, this has been going on for a long time. We've always made one contribution to the PTA, and um, this is the, their ask for their annual fundraiser. So, um, you know, that's, you know, I'm not even up for election. and. Um, no, anyway, all right. Next uh, is Francis Newhart. Uh, Francis Newhart, uh, 9920 West Broadview Drive. After many years of experience with town elections, I'd like to know with the new, uh, the upcoming April 4, 2017 town elections. Is this going to solve council's bullying issues? Will town council and staff be neutral in the upcoming April 4th, 2017 town election? Will new, new candidates uh, that will not be following the party line be discriminated against? And why was there an advantage to the incumbents and a new candidate when an announcement appeared in the town's uh, February 2017 news waves 
without stating new candidates may also register and the qualifying times of February 22nd, 2017 through March 3rd, 2017 to register. Are the politician incumbents going to be honest to both town residents and citizens and have a fair election that allows for one, an elected mayor, two, term limits, and a code of ethics that discourages council members from bullying, especially towards new candidates during town elections. And this can be put onto the uh, election ballot this year at no cost, all three of those items. Will the town's professional politicians avoid filing and or threatening frivolous complaints against the new candidates who do not agree with the party line? Will past records on incumbents be counted? Will any conflict of interest on incumbents be counted? And will Bay Harbor Island elections be a beauty contest? Or will citizens have the right to hear both incumbents and new candidates speak on issues that we are faced with today? Especially the council ignoring an alleged inaccurate opinion on the BDS movement stated by a church by the sea, Val Bay lobbyist, and which we still have not had any discussion or anything put on an agenda which is very important to many of our Jewish members here in our community. And again, our town election is on April 4th, 2017, and I hope that people find a candidate that they can believe in. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We have um, Maria um, Cornet. Maria? Maria? Is that more, is that, I'm sorry, what's the name? 107 98th uh, Street. Street, apartment number 6. Okay. It's not here. Okay. Hi. All right. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Oh. Okay. I got your name right. <laughs> First of all, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Kelly, I like your rat. Looks lovely. Um, Jordan, I very seldom give you kudos. <laughs> but you know what? Today you're getting one. <laughs> because you are always thinking about kids. And there's a lot of families in this town that want to pull. And, oh, and I want all of you, and I know you all have kids. And there's some kids that never are able to put the foot inside a pool. So please be open-minded about it, and let's do it. I want to give kudos to you, uh, Stephanie Bruder, uh, for providing a bus to go to Miami Dade for the fourth graders. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, hope that the police department is going to do the copy and the get to know the citizens. And I would request that Officer Brilliant lead that charge because he's amazing. He knows all the families. He knows every kid in town. I just don't want the nerds that some of the Washington call them nerds, excuse me. I, I, uh, you know, just get the happy cops out there so that they can get to know uh, the, the, uh, the families. Um, I'd like to tell uh, Roger Santana, who's running for uh, council, that the top that the, who complained about the the the, the tent was uh, down. Roger, it's up. It's been fixed, thanks to you and your beautiful wife, Marcy. And uh, also, um, I'd like to know when Doris Morano's uh, memorial is going to happen, and the electric board, electronic board, just to talk about you know different things going on in the community center. It's so important. We're doing great things. I want to say, like Donald Trump, huge things at the community center. <laughs> we really are. Regine, you're doing a great job, and thank you, JC, and of course you, uh, Ronald, to stir everything and approve everything. Popcorn for Scully, the movie, Hank, uh, just so showing um, uh, exactly Hanks. And um, 
It's at 1.30, and everybody's invited, and uh, Ron has approved, and JC, popcorn and water uh, for all the uh, people attending. The computer classes, like you said, staff, the Spanish classes, we're going to start knitting classes. We're going to, we're going to be doing, JC told me to take it easy, but we're going to get it, <laughs> we're going to get it done. And the teenagers, I'm very interested in the teenagers, and we're going to come up with a plan for the teenagers. Okay, thank you very much. And I want to thank all of you for all what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to lie to see you. Mario uh, Vissera. Uh, oh, no comment. Okay. All right. Uh, we're done with public comment. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. Uh, if we can just... Um, we have well, to poll. Yeah, well, I already. Three already. Well, I was just going to vote on oh. the ones on four and nine. I'll move it. Well, actually, four, nine, nine and a half. Okay. Four, sorry, nine, nine and a half. Four, nine, nine and a half. I'll move it. Wait, wait. What are we voting on? Uh, four, nine. <laughs> number four, number nine, and 9.5. 9.5. <laughs> four. Second. Okay. We have, um, and do we need, you don't need a poll vote for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in, uh, all's in favor say aye. 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 Anyone against? All right, the ayes have it. Okay, so now that we did that, so um, 3A and 3B, John. <laughs> yeah, again, a um, couple of errors back in the, uh, in the minutes. Uh, we talked about this last time on 3A. Um, if you look at the bottom, it's, it says that, you know, I had recommended that uh, we take a look about the possibility of if the benefits were approved for the town council members, we should look at the other committees. But I did not, I was not the one who said to put in the ballot. Uh, we, we, yeah, you were. Really we're listening. Okay, then, then I'm wrong. But I, I didn't think I was. Okay, then, then my mistake. Then, for my mistake, so be it. Okay. On 3B, um, I just wanted on there that I had asked Ed, uh, Dan Freya last time oh, yeah, for, the rec, uh, for the report on the rising rates. I wanted to let it know. Okay. And the effect on the town center. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say a full completely for this meeting because, I mean, I have some comments, and I usually don't care whether they're reflected or not, but... Right. None of my comments that's were fine. even mentioned. So let's just pull it and bring it Sorry. back. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 3A and 3B are going to go back? Okay. Yes. We have public comment for 3B. So, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Newhut. It's been pulled. <laughs> It's been pulled already. It's been pulled. Oh, it's been pulled? All right. So, sorry. It's, it's been pulled. It's going to come back. So we're not voting on it. We're not voting on it. It's going to come back next month. So, okay. Um, next we have, let's see, number five, Isaac. Yeah. Um, I just had the opportunity to attend an ethics, uh, an ethics briefing, the, a mandatory ethics training uh, last week in the, the village of Bell Harbor. And it just so happens that Joe Santorino, who is the head of the Ethics Commission, you know, had mentioned that there were, um, you know, several towns that actually implemented this um, higher code of ethics, if that's what you want to call it. Um, after reading through this, you know, I noticed a lot of the language is, really caters to a, a town or actually a county with an elected mayor um, or, a, or a strong mayor. And there's a lot of provisions in this that are just so non-applicable to a town our size that I think adopting this would create more confusion than it would benefit. And I'd like to remind everyone what I learned in the ethics uh, training, which is that, um, you know, apart from the county code of ethics, which is their standard code of ethics, which, which, which we must comply with, there is also a state of Florida code of ethics, which in certain circumstances is even a higher and more difficult threshold to reach. And, um, you know, I personally think that this is just creating a little bit more paperwork. And the way it's presented here, which is really for Miami-Dade County, which is a huge $3.5 billion budget with all kinds of committees and appointed officials and 
elected officials that actually make a little bit of money and have a huge um, spending account. Um, it just, it's just so non-applicable to a town like ours that, um, you know, I think this is kind of a, either like a feel-good thing or just really wasted time by staff and our legal counsel because, you know, I would suggest that if the council's desire was to adopt this, um, you know, I think just uh, recreating this to apply to our town would be kind of a waste of time and money. Yeah, I mean, I, I would want to say that, um, you know, I, I looked at this also, and, you know, I'd like to get staff input as to what other municipalities have done. It's nice to say, oh, you know, the county's done this, and, and we received this like an hour ago. It doesn't, it, what we were given hasn't been adopted. I'm not saying it hasn't been adopted, but this, w the copy we have is not adopted copy. Um, so I, I'd like to, you know, I just got this an hour ago. I'd like to actually look more into it and see what other municipalities, I'd like staff to see what other cities have done because maybe they've done it, done it better. Uh, a lot of times we copy what other cities have done, but this is not the case. So, you know, I, I'd like to have staff look at it. It can't hurt if it comes back, you know, another month or two or whatever. It's not, it's not the biggest deal. Let me ask one thing because I mean, you mentioned Joe Sanarino. He's I mean, pretty much the guru of uh, anything about ethics here in the county. Did you speak to him about this at all, specifically as far as whether or not it applies to a small town? I didn't ask him any specific questions on this, but he took it upon himself, you know, to mention that there are certain municipalities that have adopted the quote-unquote honor code. But the funny thing is, the dynamic in his speech was that he was kind of like unimpressed by it. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, he didn't he didn't see this as something that's going to help, you know, solve malfeasance or prevent a crook from being a crook. I would, then I, my thought would be this. I'd love to get his opinion on it. Be, with, with, if it's something that he thinks that it will increase the ethics here, absolutely. That's yeah. intelligent. Sure. I'd like to see Joe's response to it. Yeah. Well, that can't okay. Hurt. Can I address this, please? Sure. Okay. I put this item on the agenda. And just a little background, if you remember, uh, we all, uh, f five of us went to best practices in October. Councilmember Fuller, Councilmember Yaffe, of course. I did not. Oh, you were not there? I apologize. You're usually there. Um, Mayor Leonard, you're on the board and you present. And uh, Isaac, you're on the state board. I believe you were there as well. So our ethics commission has a vendor booth. And they had what, what you said we got an hour ago was the actual policy and procedure, not the resolution. We've had the resolution, which is shorter. So he was asking elected officials, you know, there are 35 municipalities, and as you pass by and talk to him, he'd say, here you go, take a copy of XYZ, and this is something that we're asking all municipalities in Dade County to go ahead and support. It's just a resolution, and the honor code just basically says that if you know of any illegal activity happening in your city, whether you're an employee or an elected official, administrator, that you report it to the proper authority. I really don't think it's that complicated. And I got started by actually asking for this to go on the consent agenda. The attorney called me and said, would you mind running it by the council first? So I brought it up first. And you all said, yes, go ahead. So then uh, it was sent to our attorneys. It was crafted. The resolution was crafted. It's, it's just very simple. It's very soft. It's just asking us to uphold an ethical standard. And yes, Joe Centerino is aware. He's on vacation for two weeks right now, but he's well aware because he's asking our little cities to pass this resolution. Um, let me just tell you, I have, I mean, quite honestly, again, if it's something that I think increases the ethics requirements, I have no problem with it. You know, I'm always going to be in favor of that. But I think it's not a bad thing just put it in front of Joe with just a, a simple little memo from him just saying he recommends it or doesn't recommend it. That would answer Isaac's questions. And if, I'll tell you this. If he recommends it, he got my complete support on it. Yeah? I'll put that on the record right now. This is now going to be the third time. This was not said when I brought it up for discussion the first time. It's really very simple. It's, it's fine with me. You guys can do whatever you want. I'll vote for it. But I think I, if you want to talk about a waste of time, having this discussion when we could all just say, yes, we agree to uphold the highest standard of ethics, including if we know of something 
that's illegal. We're going to report it. It's not that complicated. That's what it boils down to. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 my point, look, look, I'm not trying to. It's coming. Not, it's coming from ethics. So why are you going to have them look no, at it no, again? No, not, it came from there. I'm not disagreeing with you on it. All I'm saying is. There is one gentleman in this county that everybody looks to as the guru for, for ethics, and he essentially dictates what's best for everybody in every single municipality. Ask him. This came well. from him. He's already been asked. He, he well, I was bringing up a point simply as whether or not it applies to small cities. Ask him a specific question. I communicated with him. He says yes. I've, I've already done that. I've communicated with him. I consulted the man on this. And also, I guess the other one that will probably be pulled as well, both the, the honor code number five and the oath of civility. These all came from ethics, and we've all been asked by them to do it. So you guys will vote how you want, but this is the most, I mean, we heard the word witch hunt not too long ago. So I don't understand why these two simply benign resolutions that has been asked of all the little towns by the Ethics Commission. So we're just going in a circle, but it's okay. Do what you like. Well, right. first of all, one second. Okay. I, I, I don't think that what Josh is asking for a gentleman's uh, opinion is going around in circles. Second of all, we're all required to report if somebody is doing something unethical or illegal. So we're already held to that standard. And I don't, you know, Kelly, I understand that you think that maybe it's a witch hunt. It's not a witch hunt. He's, he's only asking that the gentleman who is the guru of all this, you know, you've talked to him. It's been done. That's but okay. we have not talked to him. And we don't have his opinion. I was there, and, and I, don't, I don't remember Joe's and, and I have no problem voting for this, but if Josh wants the opinion of the gentleman, you know, you've had the honor and have called him, but Josh doesn't have that. And with all due respect, he ha he's entitled to that, to have that opinion as you are to yours. And as far as I'm concerned, I will vote for it. I mean, I have no problem voting for it either, but we're already held to those standards. I don't think that it's necessary, you know, for you to, you know, the implication is that we need this to be held to a certain standard. I think that we're already held to that standard, but if it makes it clearer for the community, then that's great. I have no problem with it. But if there's concerns that it's not written correctly for our town, then yes, I would like it to be just simply looked at to make sure that it fits what Isaac is saying and what Josh is saying. And I don't think that that's necessarily a brush saying we don't want to do this. I think what they're both saying is, yes, we want to do this, but we want to make sure it fits our town. And that's very different than just saying, no, we don't want to do this. Well, there is part two to this also is that we should decide. This is about taking the oath, not about what we're required to do. So what I, I assume that this would have passed because even Mr. Centerino said, who would vote against this? But now I see why. But the second part of it is when will we take the oath? And I would suggest that at every annual organizational meeting, when the new candidates get sworn in, that that would be a good time. And I discussed with the attorney today. I said, is that a good time while well, there's already an oath being taken that we all just raise our seven hands together and take these two additional oaths. So if we want to bring these two back another time, then I would like to add that suggestion of when we will actually take the oath. That's because fine. Miami Beach, no for problem. example, okay. just did their oath of civility. Uh, just I just have a, a comment, though. Yeah. Um, you're not talking about two oaths, Kelly. Six is an oath of civility, along with the inaugural oath. And five is just a, an honor <coughs> oath. The one thing I would say about Joe Centerino um, is that I think it's incumbent upon him as the chair of the Ethics Commission that if he feels that there is an honor code or some other resolution or some policy that municipalities should adopt, then he should communicate directly with the municipalities and say this was passed by the commission. I'm recommending that all municipalities adopt this and for whatever reasons. As a matter of course, not waiting for, uh, you know, for one of us to, you know, to communicate with him or have the town attorney communicate with him after a member of the council, you know, recommends that, uh, you know, a particular resolution be adopted. I think it's something that he finds important. And I'm not suggesting that he doesn't find it important, but as a matter of policy, I think that's his job and that's his responsibility to do that. All right. So we're going to defer five and six? Okay. All right.
All right. Sounds good. All right. Number seven. I brought number seven um, for vacation rentals. It's, it's been deferred. deferred. It's coming back. It's, yeah, it's coming back. Number seven. Um, the reason why I brought this up, this is something that staff brought up. Um, one of the, the, the top concerns that, that people ask me about Bay Harbor is the rising uh, costs and affordability of, of uh, apartments in the town. And of course, um, you know, when you have a great quality of life, you have nice amenities like a new community center and a library and a great school, um, it's hard to, to have an argument because it, it is a great place to live. Um, when you have individuals that are using their apartments in order to um, turn it into a little Hilton hotel, um, that's not part of the deal. And obviously, I think that there's an you know increase in cost and services because the people that are renting these apartments, um, you know, obviously uh, they're not there to just watch TV and go to bed at night early. Um, now, the, the fees that they've uh, requested, I think, are a little too light compared to some of our, our other municipalities. There's too many few. I think Lighthouse Point is more in line with us because they're a smaller municipality like us. I, I think. You know, I'm not trying to make it too punitive, but the reality is there is an increase in services, and um, you know, I don't think that most people, when they buy their apartment, the intent is to have your neighbor uh, turn it into a, a, a rental facility. So, so what do you want? The I, I think seven, the the seven fifty five hundred and, and the seventy inspection fees. Uh, uh, um, uh, the inspection fee is whatever it's it's. In the charge of the building department, which is not 70, okay. so I don't, we don't want to name that in the resolution. Okay, so okay. the 750, the 500, and then the annual would be the same thing, the 500, and with the uh, administrative fee would be 25. So the initial registration fee you want is 750, and then the annual would be 500. Business, the tax receipt stays. Yeah, and the, yeah. And the annual fee you want to raise. Well, the, 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 the tax receipt is the, is right. the 500, and it would be 500 annually, so. So instead to so can you make a yeah, motion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to um, delete the 500 reference and insert 750 and the 200 references and insert 500. I'll second it. Okay. And then any comment in regards to that? Just one question. Yeah, yeah. It's defensible, correct? As far as the charges, we're, we're, we don't have, we're not going to have a problem trying to use that, that pricing structure, right? Uh, I think it's defensible at this stage based on the state of the law, yes. Perfect. That's all I wanted to say. Good question. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, everyone say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anyone against? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you so much. Um, we have number eight. And Josh, you brought that one up. Well, Elizabeth brought this one up. Uh, I'm not sure if we should actually pull it off or not. Um, it's her item in the first place, as I realize here. Well, but... My, yeah, I mean, should you? I mean, we can. If you have a question, let's let's pull it for next month. Yeah, I, I, I have one question. Out of respect for her. So. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to pull number eight um, for next month because Council Member Tricoche is not here. Uh, nine nine point five. We're passed. So we're done. Send out. Oh, we'll All right, number ten. ten. Consideration and approval of an ordinance on second reading. Requested by Council Member Reed, amending Section 5-5 of the Town Code with regard to the use of an off-duty police officer at construction sites. An ordinance of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands of Florida, amending Section 5-5 of the Bay Harbor Islands Town Code with regard to the use of state certified firefighters and off-duty police officers at construction sites, providing for penalties, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. I move it. Second. A motion second. Any comment? All right. Hearing none, roll call, please. Yeah. Council Member Yaffe. Four. Um, Council Member Sauber. Four. Council Member Reed. Four. Council Member Fuller. Four. Vice Mayor Bruder. Four. Mayor Leonard. Four. No. You know. Three. Number eleven. Before we move on, Jordan, um, I know that I guess I would have said this during the first part of the meeting for deferrals and future agenda items. Oh, sir. You know, I think it would be important for us to put on for discussion um, consideration about changing the construction time to 8 a.m. And, and I have a uh, reason for that because I know I, I go to the gym on Wednesdays, Harbor Fitness, and I go early. And when I was on our way home, you know, I see all the guys that are like in, in front of like the Monarch property, like loitering around 
while all the kids and the parents are walking their kids to school. And it's just such an awkward sight to see, you know, these guys that arrive early and they're just hanging out, just basically sitting there on their lunch pails, gawking at the mothers that are bringing their kids to the school. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really, it's, I mean, I think it would be more appropriate to have the guys on the work site while the kids are walking to school rather than have them be in front of the work site, you know, with the potential of them losing focus and, you know, doing something bad to either a mother or a child. So I think we should seriously consider changing our starting time from 9 o'clock to 8 o'clock. We'll discuss so. that in the next meeting. So um, put that on the agenda for next meeting, please. Okay. Number 11. Consideration and approval requested by the town clerk to revoke the business tax receipt of a home business located at 10073 Bay Harbor Terrace, Fortador LLC, and TSC Car Wash LLC. Okay. Um, I'll move it. Yeah. Second. The motion second. Is any, Is the business owner here? No, it's okay. not. Uh, oh, you said they were not. Be- before, yeah. we, before we yeah. rush the vote on this, yeah. um, can you just give us in your own words what happened here? Um, so we want to, like, only because... It's never happens. Well, I mean, it's rare. This yeah. is rare, because yeah. I know I've been here for over 18 years now. Yes. Um, you know, and this is rare. Yes. This is a home occupational license. The only uh, reason we issue a home license is for someone to work from home in an office. So basically we go out, and I, and I understand the pictures were not very good, but we even go out and take um, pictures of the area where they work, which is an office, usually a desk, a, a computer, um, and, and a phone. Um, there's not supposed to be a lot of deliveries. There's not supposed to be product more than a small area. Um, and this, uh, we got complaints from the neighbors next door, the neighbors behind the building, um, and I think you could see that there was a complete full operation of large equipment going into the garage. Uh, there was people working out of the garage. Uh, we gave them a notice of violation. The, the fine is all the way up to like $3,000 now, and uh, it's just not, it's not, the neighbors have to put up with incre- increased activity, increased noise, uh, a business operation. Um, this gentleman has been notified. Um, we still have seen movement there. Yeah. Um, so for the first time in my whole career here, I'm asking for the council to approve. Uh, Do they have also um, trucks? Yes. Uh, you can see in the photographs that there's delivery. the townhouses. Yeah, this right. is the townhouse. So that's basically operating out of the garage. So, so car washing in the garage, or, or is no? No, this this is he has two licenses. One is for car wash, which is kind of like um, out. He has a van. He goes out. Car, uh, goes but he also has a, a bunch he, of trucks. Right, and he has uh, also a license because he sells the equipment, those big huge machines to do the car wash operation. <laughs> so he's basically using the the, the garage as a warehouse. So. Right. Well, now that we're on to this, as I was walking the island, I saw a bunch of his trucks parked in our municipal parking uh, lots, and I guess it's something to put on the agenda of of how many commercial um, uh, um, vehicles. Well, he's only allowed one, but there are meters there. Yes. I don't know if he was. Yes, he is. It's in the meter. Right. That's what I'm saying. How many commercial... Uh, I mean, when I was walking the island, I must have seen 10 different places with all these commercial in our parking lots with, uh, they did have, you know, the decals, but, uh, you know, it's becoming uh, like a place of either advertisement or a place for people to to park their vehicles, and we don't know, you know, there could be chemicals in there. We don't know what's in these. Yeah. Well, we, we, the, the council allows um, one commercial vehicle basically per address, and then we do have some residents that bring their commercial vehicle home and park it in the municipal lot. That's the only place where they can park it uh, other than if they have, you know, they can hide it away from view. So that is something that's allowed. But one, but I saw right. like two not or three, not a fleet. <laughs> yes. I've seen two or three. Well, we had issues with taxes on some point right. where we, we went after them, but that's not usually. No, no, I saw a couple of, uh, <laughs> 
All right. So I think we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I understood exactly what you meant. Not that it's going to make a difference at this point, but yeah. the Home Office may not provide any exterior evidence. He had no signage or anything like that. No signage, but he had. He was blocking the driveway. He had <laughs> deliveries all day long. They had people working out of the so garage. So exterior. <laughs> Industrial. So what? Yeah. No, so just you know, walk me through this. Um, okay. So tonight, let's say, let's predict that we revoke his yes. his occupation rights. Yes. What happens then? Then we're going to cite him for that too. Now he already is coming to the master for exceeding the the, the cubic feet. He's already got fines going. This is a bigger fine. This is two fifty a day, as opposed to the fifty dollar a day uh, fine. And um, eventually, we're going to have to put a lien on his property. Now he does own townhouse. So he does own. This is he. Yes. Yeah, the so he he owner of the, uh, that owns the corporations owns the townhouse. Yes. But but hold on. He, in order to homestead, he can't be using this as a as a business. I mean, there's there's an issue there. So well, 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 well he does the company, You could you right. can lien the assets of the corporation. Right. But it depends on who right. owns the actual unit. I mean, right. is he homesteaded the unit? The townhome? I don't know that. I would have to research that. But, so but there's, be a worthless it, it, it no, 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 becomes a bigger a business. If he's, if he's, if really, it's not a homestead. I mean, that's a, that's a whole different. Right. Thing. But I'm right. saying that the business obviously has assets. That mm -hmm. So for that reason, I'm going to call that question because it's part. really it's yeah. not yeah. Yeah. relevant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? <laughs> all right. It's unanimous. All right. Number twelve. All right. Um, Discussion and uh, possible action requested by Mayor Leonard for a proposal from Florida International University amount of $12,988 to perform a study with, for the creation of an interlocal <coughs> shuttle bus system between the town of Bay Harbor Islands, Bow Harbor, Village, and Surfside. All right. Um, I brought this item up. Um, I've spoken several times about the municipalities working together and um, one of the things that obviously um, Val Harbor and Surfside has done for us was there's a shower um, that has positively impacted our residents' lives. One of the things that we've talked about, I mean, this has been talked about for over six, eight months now, actually almost a year now, is the concept of, of having synergy amongst our, our um, buses. Um, right now, as it is, um, there is one individual location where all of the shuttles for the three municipalities meet up, and that's actually um, at the Publix and Surfside. Um, the mayors of Bow Harbor actually is the, the former mayor of, of Bow Harbor, um, the current mayor of, of uh, Surfside, Daniel Deitch, and the mayor of Sun Isles Beach, Bud Scholl, and I have discussed for many months uh, having that same synergy um, by adding Sun Isles Beach and having FIU create a study. Um, when we had our budget time, I asked that this be put as a budgeted item, so this is budgeted, it's in this year's budget, so you're not taking money out of reserves. Um, we've agreed that if this all, if this passes tonight, all four municipalities would share a quarter of the cost and the benefit would be significant. One of the things that, that we've talked about is sync, um, linking our shuttles together. So for example, the shuttle that, that's in Bay Harbor only goes to certain locations. You know, for example, it doesn't go to, to Aventura Mall. But can I imagine that you can get off a, a bus in Bay Harbor and get on another one for free that will take you to Aventura Mall or take you to South Beach or take you to North Miami. We've, and, and for many individuals on this council that have been to league meetings, um, this year's league issue has been President Suarez's uh, committed effort to having the SMART plan for uh, reasonable uh, transportation. And this is big. The concept of actually having some level of transit, mass transit, to take you to downtown, this is exactly what we're talking about. So this is a small price at under $13,000. But the benefits, in fact, I'll, I'll mention one other thing we've talked about. Sunny Isles Beach has, has already looked into, and I think they've actually already done it, um, having um, um, adding technology uh, by putting GPS locators on their buses so residents actually know when the bus is going to hit the stop. Because when you're waiting at the bus stop for the Bay Harbor bus, it's not as, as uh, timely as maybe a, a, a Metro Dade bus. So the concept that we can have it all linked, where you'll know when the Bow Harbor, the Sunnales Beach, the, the Surfside, and the Bay Harbor buses are all linked together, 
I mean, it, now you're talking about real synergy, working together. Jordan, yeah, I ask you one thing? Yeah, please. I just want to clarify one thing, because this is something, yeah, I don't think this has anything to do with the shower. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it's but let me just say, together. But I understand, but let me say, I mean, this is something we've all talked about and wanted for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the only thing I just want to clarify one thing. The, the matter before us dealt specifically, and while it mentioned Sunny Isles and reading the materials yeah. and all this stuff, a moment ago you said something, and I think I just want to make sure we're clear. Yeah. You said for a moment that part of the study is to take a look at doing it for the four municipalities, and each of the four municipalities will each pay a quarter of it. Yes. I think you mean rather that Cirque Bay Al Bay will each do a third. That's what's actually in front of us. Not yeah, all it's, four. It's, yeah, yeah, this is it's a third. third. It's yeah, it's a third. I'm sorry, a third, a third, a third. Sunny Isles Beach is... Sunny Isles is separate for this portion of it. Yeah, but they're, but they're still part of it. It's no, I understand. Yeah. I just, but I just want everybody to be under, to understand what we have in front of us here is a third, a yeah, third. Yeah, we're paying a third. For so. Cirque Al Bay. Okay, just... I'm sorry, it's FIU so so pricey that uh, it looked like a quarter. <laughs> I have a couple of comments because um, I emailed JC about this earlier in the week. Um, the municipalities have been talking about this probably for ten years, not the last year or two. And, you know, when I was the mayor, oh, yeah. we had the same conversations, and I know that JC has worked, you know, diligently with uh, you know managers and assistants in, in some of our neighboring communities. You know, to try to put something together. Um, I'm not saying we're voting against this, but this is, you know, there's no commitment here. FIU is going to provide some suggestions about how we could do this nicely and maybe it'll work or not work, but there's no commitment from the municipalities or the elected officials to adopt their, their recommendations. You know, I'm certainly in favor of a, um, a good bus system for Bay Harbor Islands and our neighboring you know, municipalities, but I just wonder with all of the communications and the effort that have gone over, you know, for the for the last I'm going to say 10 years, you know, why we need this study, you know, I, because we have some really good people such as JC right. working on this, and and if, if if all of our you know municipal officials working together can put something together, I'm not sure why they're suddenly going to say, wow, look at what you did, right. let's adopt this. So right. JC, I'd like and to hear your thoughts. JC, before on you it. comment, sure. if I may, just to interject, don't isn't there some level of um, cooperation at this point already? There is. There is. There is. Uh, and I'll start with that. There, the, the three shuttles, like this is going back years ago, um, the three shuttles each had their own individual routes. Surfside, when their original bus just kind of went around Surfside. <coughs> um, now they kind of, they venture off into Miami Beach. Um, Bell Harbor goes all the way to Aventura and we go through to North Miami all the way to the New Publix up on 140 something. Um, and what we did is we created three, a uh, couple of uh, transfer state transfer points, and you name the one that all three of them go to is the Surfside Publix. Um, Bell Harbor also, Bell Harbor and us, we have uh, two more because they come right in front here in Town Hall. Right. And we also and right in front of uh, Open Kitchen, they pass by there as well, and our bus does as well. So that's another transfer point there. Um, so we did in in the recent years. That's how we kind of kind of coordinated. The, the shuttle systems. What this one, it, what this study really is, is the question was asked. Well, you have, we have a contract with LOSF. Surfside has a contract with I don't know who, and, and Bell Harbor has a contract with somebody else. Is there a way to make it more efficient, and maybe we can save money if we have one contract? Um, and that's what this study would also look like. That's why they were talking about a unified system, and, and so that's <laughs> one of the main questions that we and we also take a look at. Just agree to piggyback. You know, hire the you know have one operating system, the Surf Bell Bay bus system, and and and, and, and you are you pretty much have a route already because yeah, and, it's also gonna, and, and from my understanding, this this study is going to take a look at all the routes and see and determine the efficiencies of the route. It takes maybe like for our bus, it takes like a half an hour or so to to come back or you know to do the return trip. Uh, so so it also takes a look at each individual route. Now the question is. It, why FIU or why they have a third party do it? Well, I don't know if any any of the municipalities want to do it themselves, and they would rather have somebody come in and evaluate it all, and then tell us, hey, this is what we found. You guys do it. Well, Plus, let, oh, let me ask you this: Did any of these communities make a commitment to say, okay, we want to make one system, and so we're going to put this money towards it because we've all made the commitment that we're going to be one united system, or we're all going to just look at it, read it, and this then is, make it? This is the ante. This is that's what this is. I mean, that's really what it becomes. 
at least the way I read it is as follows, is that, you know, this is after all the years of everybody talking about within each municipality talking to each other and trying to figure something out, sometimes it takes a third party to actually say, look, you know, stop looking at yourself, stop looking at you, stop looking at yourself, you stop looking at yourself. This is the best method that will work for all three communities. Here's how we lay it out. And then once they put a couple bucks in, you know, maybe there's a chance everybody jumps at it. There's no commitment from anybody. But when it's laid out in front of them and a third party has actually said it and said this is what's fair for everybody, maybe there's a shot. That's the way I'm I I'm assuming that question. because they, they, they're, you know, if Surfside and Fall Harbor are putting the money where their mouths are, that they're semi-committed right. that's, that's to the actually. Yeah. They're committed to, I mean, they, to make they have the dollars. They're committed to a study. Right. Yeah. yeah, they have dollars. Yeah, in fact, important. they wanted this last, what happened was they wanted this last year, and I told them no because I didn't want to put it on the agenda until we've actually put it in the budget. I didn't want to pull the money out of reserves, so I told um, Mayor uh, Deitch, who's the, the mayor of Surfside, he's been the lead person in favor of this. I said, I, I really didn't want to bring it to the council until we had it in the budget. So I've actually been the one holding back on it because I didn't feel appropriate to take money out of reserves without appropriating at it at a at a current budget. Sure. Where, where does my, my when the bus system from Miami Dade? Who who organizes? You know all Transit. the tran the right the chance. Yeah. Have we? No, they're 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 part of the study. They're, they're, like they will be you know spoken with. Uh, members of the CAPT will also be yeah. uh, spoken with. They're, they're, being interviewed as their right. and they couldn't help us they couldn't help us put ours together considering that they well we've actually approached um, we we before FIU got involved we've approached the CITT uh, and and they can only do so much but then the Miami Day Transit to see if they can coordinate this type of be the third party but they there was just just they wouldn't do it it would just took forever okay. and not, one, one little thing when you if, if this does pass if we end up doing it maybe actually do the study I would just like it, and just Tracy, if you can do it, just talk to them, talk to FIU and see. There has been a significant increase in ridership in municipalities that have converted from a, I mean, say converted from a bus to a trolley style. In other words, the design of it makes a significant difference for some, for some whatever, whatever reason, nobody seems to understand. The ridership uh, shoots up in every municipality and they design we, it like a trolley. We, we thought it's, about that, no, but we, it was we, very our, expensive, our, our, remember? I, we talked about it last time, I understand. I'm just saying, see if they can, if FIU, when they're looking at the analysis, if they have that in some part of the consideration. No Regar regardless of whether this, this study passes or not, um, and I guess this would also affect it, our contract is up at the, right. at the end of this year, so we can, uh, when we go out to bid again. No, we no, we talked about it. We talked to the trolley. test. I'm just saying, just make sure. I, I don't want FIU to come back and say, well, we did this full analysis. Oh, but you're thinking about a trolley? Well, we'd have to start over. Just yeah, yeah. mention it up in front. That's all I'm asking. Paul Gables, the, the ridership. Question. Yes. Also, is there any green component in this? Are we looking at any kind of a hybrid? That's that. Those are in the details as far as the contract. Right now, we're just looking at the route. But if, if we were to enter into like a three three town type of contract, we want to do a hybrid or biodiesel or something. Then yeah. at that point, we can. That should be looked at too. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We have a public comment. Um, uh, Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Former Mayor Lind is over. There we go. And just and now that it's been just coming up, the CITT is like all gung ho and you know they're in favor, supportive of. of Will they give us money? money. Uh, <laughs> we, we have the money that they give us. Yeah, we have right. the so, First of all, let me let me explain something. Uh, the money the towns receive are based on population, so we don't get the same amount of money that Carl Gables or the city of Miami gets so they can put on their trolleys. We don't have that. But I will tell you in the past that we do have communities like in Hialeah, Miami Springs, etc., that have combined routes where one stops, another one takes off. So this has been done, and it does work. And as long as you have your three uh three towns that agree on it, if you come to us, I'd love to save you some money. Maybe we can help in furthering this along since it has been done before in other communities. I also would hope that you would put in to your newsletter that because the, all of the buses from all of the communities are paid for by our county and by the surtax, Anybody can ride any bus in any town 
for free. So if you go to Publix with Bay Harbor bus and decide you want to take the Bay Harbor bus or Surfside bus, etc., you are entitled to do that. And I keep bringing this up because I want all of our residents to realize they have that advantage. So I would love for you to put it in the newsletter and remind them again. Uh, perhaps you can check with Val Harbor and Surfside when they go where and also include that in the newsletter or, or some place that a person can get in touch with a town hall so that they have the advantage of doing that immediately. This is, this is something that we do for all. And if we can help you rather than you having to spend the money, uh, you know, I'll be very happy to speak up for you uh, if you come again and ask CITT. Uh, they love JC because all of his reports and everything are perfect. So, so you're in favor of this, right? You're no, in favor. I'm not in favor of spending the money. No, but you're in favor of the... It's being done. So, right. Uh, so, I have, if I, so you're in favor of it? It's, 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 sure. Just, just do it. i, I got to get the tape. <laughs> just, just do it is what I'm saying. And come to us for money. We can help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, to Mayor Zilber's point, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it, we did a... Um, you know, I presented it to you guys, and we also put it in the newsletter. We have a new schedule. The, the three communities, we, right. we, we create a new schedule, so when you open it up, It'll have all the three different routes, and it's, it, I mean, it really is a, a combined effort. Right. So it if really can, is If we can re can do it now. Reset. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Any other comments? We have uh, I'll put in yeah, Victor Maya. Not going to press the button. Victor Maya, 1155, 103rd Street. Um, this council has refused completely, utterly, unambiguously, without <laughs> any hesitation to engage any type of outside consultant uh, such as FIU or any others in terms of improving efficiencies for this town. Over and over and over again, you guys said, no, we do not need to spend the money on that. So that's, I'm a little bit surprised, you know, when I see, you know, this, this proposal here. And I had written before coming to the meeting, um, why not put our assistant town manager on it? Uh, so I complete, you know, I agree completely uh, with uh, Mr. Yaffe on this. You know, we have JC who's been working on this issue for, it, it sounds like, years. Uh, fully understands it totally and completely, can deal with and negotiate and, and do what needs to be done so that we have an efficient service. Uh, the, uh, the map that we have with, with all of the routes and everything is fantastic. I have taken that bus all the way out to Aventura. I've taken it out to Costco. Um, I've hooked on and all that. I think it's, it, it's great and it's fantastic. But to spend this money, you know, on that just because it's, it was budgeted, you know, seems uh, a little bit short-sighted. It says, oh, well, we're so rich, why not? Let's just do it. And, and again, without having any commitment of, well, once this is done, we're going to do this or not do this or change our minds or, well, you know, great, so we'll put a GPS on the bus. Does, does that really, you know, accomplish what, 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 is, what is the goal of, of this type of transportation? Uh, so I, I would agree that uh, we, we just leave our assistant town manager on, on task on this. Uh, he's doing a good job uh, on it. I'm sure he'll continue to do a good job on it. And uh, uh, let's uh, use those uh, $18,000 for something else. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, no more public comment. Any other comment from council? Is there a motion and a second? I'm sorry. Is there a motion for this? I'll move it. Uh, Josh. And a second? No. $13,000. Well, I would prefer to bring it back. I'd rather have JC talk to Linda and see if the um, if they can, you know, Linda made an offer or Mayor Zilber made an offer to work with JC and see if we could do this without, you know, um, spending the money. I mean, that's... I have, I have asked the CITT and we've asked the CITT with, with their... The answer they gave me, unless there's another, you know, some other funds available, which I'd be more, you know, 
more than interested in. in no, I, I understand. But they, what they said is, oh yeah, you can get some of the money that is that, that we give you already and, right. and go towards it. But we already have our money earmarked for the cost of our shuttle. Um, no, I thought that they were offering to because no. they no. no. No, no, no. And, and, our, and, and no, we've already invited. Money, just help in actually no. putting it together the same thing as the study would have done because I have no problem spending the money. I would just like, a, I would have liked a stronger commitment or something from the other municipalities. I didn't get to speak to them. I know. I don't know if you want to share your information of your conversations because I don't know what the mayor said. Well, before, you know, before, before you respond, I'd like to know whether Bell Harbor and Surfside have already appropriated their share. Surfside has CIT dollar CITT dollars already appropriated for this purpose. So, so as typical with Surfside, they're using outside funds because they won't use their own money. They, for, they, they use their funds. To, you know, there, there are two types of funds for CITT, and our funds are, are already appropriated. So they, they already have a, a line item appropriated for this. They've been waiting. Um, Bow Harbor. Um, on the, the individual that I had been speaking with, um, he's no longer on the council. I've only um, had one meeting with the current mayor. Um, we've brought this up briefly. Um, so they, they have two new members on the council. Yeah. Um, Spe speaking I, with the staff at Bell Harbor, and I just and I, I was sitting right next to him at the CITT workshop two Fridays ago. They're like, yeah, we're ready to go on the see. study. You know, yeah, but, no, but what bothers me a second, hold on a second, because Jordan, one of the things I was thinking about, because you had said earlier that Surfside had already approved. Not now. I'm saying earlier tonight. Yeah, you said but now you're saying they're not doing it with their own dollars. They're doing CITT dollars. Well, it's it's. But I'm saying, but it's, right, but it's, but it's because my my only hesitation yeah. before was when I, when you know went out the window when you said Surfside's already punched the thirteen because yeah. Surfside does historically cling to the, you know, the pennies and is not going to spend. But if they're going to go ahead and spend this of their own money, uh, I think hey maybe they're anteing up, but they're not anteing their own cash return. Well, they? no, they they have dollars that they can use that we've already we've already spent our allocation for CITT. Right. There, there's actually a, a fund that can be used for this, but we already you know and JC and Ron can talk about this. We already use that money for other purposes. Right, they've held it back. Bay Harbor yeah. and Surfside receive more money yeah, I know than Bay Harbor right. does. Right. So if they want to allocate part of their their funds for whatever that has to do with transportation, bus benches, or anything else, they can do so. We have to be careful because we don't get as much money as they do. So uh, what I'm saying is if all three towns decide to do this, you can arrange schedules to do it without a study. Uh, studies have been done for other towns uh, in the past, and they do it. Uh, there's no reason why you can't do it. No, okay. if, if, if the three towns decide. Hold on, hold on. But it, let me for a second. Okay. So Surfside has not put up their own dollars, and I'm going to withdraw the mo okay. moving it. But I, I'd like you to continue a conversation. Right. Either way, but I want I want to make sure you have a conversation yeah. with them to see if they're going to put some money. I have. Well, no. Earlier, that they paid for. At a previous meeting. When I had suggested that we coordinate the lights on Ken Concourse, you volunteered to help us do that. It doesn't seem like anything was ever done about the coordination of lights on Ken Concourse. The, uh, the, when it comes to lighting for schools, no, no, I'm you, about you the, know, traffic, for the, traffic lights. the traffic lights, right. We, we do have money where we pay coordination of traffic lights in various areas all over town. So what I have said and I said back then and never received it, Isaac, not your fault, uh, is that I've never received the proposal, nor did the Transportation Trust of Dade County. We've never received that proposal. I remember when you brought that up, it was over a year ago. And I said, tell us. I haven't received that. So they need to know that because they go out and do that. It's a conversation for another day. Yeah, why don't we just, can you, can, you know, instead, rather than speaking, can you write a proposal to say, Coordinate the lights on King Congress. Right. Tell them that it's not coordinated. Okay. I don't know how. I don't know how sophisticated you have to get. Can you know, maybe take a picture. But I will say this: yeah. uh, the street light, the street lights. I mean, not the street lights. The traffic signals. Right. That I, I don't know if to see. I mean, that goes to Miami Dade Public Works. That's <laughs> right, and that, and Public Works comes before us when it has to do with any streets that transportation is on. This is a little far. Yeah, that's just not a double link. But there's no reason why. Just make the proposal. 
chosen one. Tell them you need you need it done. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, thank you so much. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, number thirteen. Wait, you were going to defer. Yeah, it was well, it actually. Item 13, approval of a change order number 27 in favor of M&J construction of Pinellas County in the amount of $1,370,623.60 to make the structural steel repairs to rest, restore the span beams on the Causeway ICW bridge. Uh, I only included 35 pictures. There's probably over 300. And this is where once the paint was removed, where there is loss through electrolysis or deterioration or corrosion, we had to bolt back into place um, the steel to make sure the bridge does, you know, stays uh, st sturdy and usable for the next 10 or 15 years. Right. Have a motion? I'll move it. And a second? No second. Okay. Any comments? I, I just sure. had a I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> Did you tell me that, that on a previous date that we've already done this? No, no. This is, oh, because I, I, I said the Oh, no, I'm sorry. The material has already been incorporated. Yes, yes, this work is, yes. this this type of work was scheduled to be done. Right. It was the quantity of work that needed to be done exceeded what we budgeted for. Okay. But we, we did mention that we were, the, the area of work, particularly around where the spans are closest to the water, needed the most work. Right, but so this is we're new. paying for what we we were already obligated to pay. It's like it's like, it's like uh, the concrete. You know, it's like you bought it. It's like the concrete when you when you're chipping it out. This is the evil change order that we have to pay for it, no matter what. It's terrible. Can you tell us approximately what dollar figure we're at, including this already? Seventeen million. Yeah, it's right exactly. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's an exchange order. So we started at 10 million approximately, and we're up to 17. 12 million. We started at 12, 11.5. Plus the program. We did part of that money that's reduced. Actually, is we got a, the grants from the state to reduce that by a million. Um, as you know, the big one of the biggest, the two items that were the biggest problems that we encountered was the grade beam or the tie beam that carries all the supports that literally we had to replace almost every single one of them. Yep. And uh, of course the, the, the support the support structure where it's in the water, a lot of work needed to be done there. And until they started to put the electrolysis system in, that had to be drilled out and, and replaced. Yeah. So your quantity, your quantity prices, it's not, it's not an additional new thing, it's just the amount of the amount of concrete. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Anyone else? Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I have some more to say. Okay. Okay. Um, didn't we have engineers do a very deep dive type of inspection into this bridge prior to launching this project? Yes. So, I mean, this type of thing just seems so incredibly pervasive and obvious that how on earth could a qualified inspector have missed the fact that we have 1.4 million dollars worth of steel plus labor um, in this one just happened to be a change order on a on a on a on a contract that we knew would replace most of the you know understructure and support structure of the bridge I mean, isn't anybody isn't anybody time. else responsible for that for this? I mean, it's a good question. If I can, we did an engineering report before we even considered re doing this work. It was about three hundred thousand dollars for that for that for study for the study for the study. And in, in the answer we were looking for, the question we needed to answer was: Is it worth putting money into the bridge to save it, or should we just start working towards a new bridge? And their answer was, if you want to get 10 to 20 years out of this bridge, we recommend that you can do the work and get it if you do this rehabilitation work. The concrete drilling, the coring, that was done before we got to really the construction. It took almost three years to get the, from, that, from that engineer's report to getting the plans done. The permitting takes almost a year and a half. So before we actually started the work, three years goes by. I'm not saying um, in the concrete it's very hard to know when you start chipping away what you're going to encounter. They didn't. They didn't core every single 
part of the bridge. It's, you just can't do that. Uh, they could, they could, where they court, they, ex they accepted so much. The other thing was when the state gave us the million dollars, they also had requirements for us to accept that. All our plans had to go to to Miami, uh, to, uh, to FDOT. They're chipping out of there. What, what they accept is a spoiling repair is not, not to go six inches beyond, is 12 inches beyond to, to get good concrete to put the repair. We argue back and split the difference. But before you can pump concrete and repair it, the, the area that the repair area increased. Another thing to note too, and I know we're, we're looking at this as one bridge, these are three bridges included in this price. So the electrolysis work, the steel work, the, all the concrete, this is spread, you know, majority, majority of it is on the ICW, but it is three bridges. And the last thing I'll say about the steel, we painted the steel, you know, I guess years ago, but a lot of that covers up your damage. You can't see behind it until you start blasting off. And the, the paint <coughs> is very unique in that it kind of hides some of what you're going to find out. It's like a shell until you blast it off. Um, I mean, it, we, we could just, you know, some of it is just, it's, you can't ignore it. A lot of it was on the, uh, you, can't, you can't see it until you start removing things. Ron, I can understand the concrete because you got to drill in and you got to core and you got to analyze. <laughs> but a lot of these photographs that you show us just are external steel. That's if the paint. They, they put paint on it just to, so it wouldn't corrode any further. What if we? What if? What if this council? What if the council rejected the change order? I don't know. We probably wind up in court. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Honestly, that might be a cheaper route. Well, that's not the. It, it, that's not the fault of the I, construction company. Can I just company. say something? I think you know it's not necessarily the construction company because we retain them. They do the work. I think, and and I haven't mentioned this publicly, but privately, I've spoken several times to managers. <coughs> I think really where the anger is with hardest in Hanover. You know, on, on, you know, every year that we're, I've been on this council, we get this entire, you know, report that's, you know, it's like 500 pages of all the pictures and it shows, I mean, every single nook and cranny of all four bridges. And I, I guess the, the question that I first raised to the manager was, you know, how do you get this 500 page report every year? And then all of a sudden the, the, you know, what's really wrong with the bridge is not really what the original let's put it this way we we knew there were going to be additional issues but the extent of how bad it was was obviously a lot more than than even i thought it was so i, I guess what what i'm trying to say is it is the reports that hardesty and hanover presented us over these years is any of that actionable is that something that we can try to look at as far as you know, we pay them, you know, a lot of money to do these reports. Look that way. Yeah, you know. I, 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 am I wrong, Isaac? I mean, this no, is no, really not. No, no, you're, it, what, you're, you're, what I hear you saying is that there was no relationship yeah. between the the inspection reports that we got right. and then, you know, the, the bid for the work to repair that, you know, the items mentioned in that report. Right. And there's, a, you know, there's like an 80% difference in the price you know, at the at the ending, you know, for the final price, and it just—it's one company. It's I mean, one company that was used. If so. I can, can throw another an answer, one of the things over the years is um, bringing back change orders. And I know sometimes it's um, when we were building the garage, when change orders would come, I would come in front of the. I would always say, "I have a change order. I have a change order." I never mind bringing change orders, but I think. Um, Sometimes there's, you know, is this the last change order and when we were dealing with this, you know, perhaps I should have came back and, you know, every month said, oh, listen, I'm going to have more steel or, and just, just hit it on a monthly basis. And it would have been less, of, less of a surprise as, as it is now. Can, can we, can we next month have an agenda item to talk about the, the hardest thing? Well, I, 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 I can tell you, we're almost, this is the last of the. No, no, no. The hardest thing in Hanover to see. All the reports for all the years and all the, the money that we spent in analyzing the, the bridges, and then here here we are having to pay additional monies for what 
you know, I'm not saying that this necessarily is is what the something that they would have found. What I'm saying is it's a straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, when is the last time you read those five hundred pages? You have like a whole stack of them, where you've gone back and read them to, to see what Harvesting Hanover said about this deal and the condition of this deal, and perhaps paint the first. You know, over. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, first we, we can have a whole you know agenda item about Harvesting in Hanover, but maybe somebody in the administration. Should take a look at those reports, well, sure you know, and see I'm whether they're accurate or not. I'm or, sure our or engineer, sound engineer. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Randy read all. that from cover to cover. I mean, you know, there's only really isn't there, Bob? Isn't there only one that's really important, which is like the last one that the they one. did yeah. prior right. to the construction know, project? You're, you're probably correct, but I'm just saying we're all talking about Hardesty and Hanover, and I'm I have no I don't care about Hardesty and Hanover whether we continue with them or not. What I, but what I'm saying is. Before we point the finger at Howard just in Hanover, then let's have a report from our town exactly. engineer, yeah. that, you know, as to whether they misled us. Is there anything in that report that was incorrect that they yeah. should have known about? Should they have known that we were going to, you know, as we went through this project, that we were, it was going to cost us a, a million dollars more for steel replacement than we than we budgeted or than we anticipated? Okay. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Was well, the report done in a reasonable manner? And that's right. it. Nothing else. Yeah. I, uh, nothing else. I won't, well, I won't tell you the conversation. Yeah. Well, why don't we have Randy next month? Can we look talk at about the look at the last report? I think like yeah. Bob is right. Look at the last report. Look at what we've done, and see if there's any correlation between what they said was and what is. Yeah. And tell us if there's a huge discrepancy or you think that they missed something. And that will kind of lead us yeah. to some conclusions that we need to make. Right. And let me tell you, it, you know, I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I am going to vote against this. Um, you know, I apologize to everybody involved um, because I'd hate to be the guy that signs the check for, you know, the fancy yacht that the owner of M&J Construction of Pinellas County is going to buy with Bay Harbor Island's taxpayers money so all right well will we have a motion a second um paul vote council member four I hate to do it but four yeah council member reed opposed council member saber opposed council member yaffe I'm going to vote in favor of it but i'm not in favor of it so. mm -hmm. exactly that's what we have we don't have a choice vice yeah. mayor bruder i'm I'm going to vote for it unless we can defer it till we figure out if there is anything that we can do. I mean, we've already bought the product, but I would like, I still would like to know from Randy if somebody no. misled us. You know, I'm going to, I, the, I mean, the reality but, of it is, is that we, we contracted have, with this I, company. Right, but I want to know if. And if we were misled by a third party, that's right. That's what that's the party. It's not this guy. Right. We're in the middle of a vote, so you have to vote. But let me just say, any claims that we have or may have against Hardesty and Hanover, uh, uh, if anything, would be strengthened in our damages by what we have to pay by contract due, due to their alleged negligence, if that turns out to be the case. So I, I see it as two issues, the hardest okay. and handover issue, separate from whether or not you have a contractual obligation to pay this this particular change. And, and one more thing, and, and Ron, I mean, you said it a while ago, and I uh, corresponded with you during the week. I think it would have been a good idea, and in the future, I'd rather see more change orders, you know, for smaller amounts so that we can... I've never had a problem with them. It's no, easier for me. I, I'm, personally, I'd rather... Do them on a regular basis because so would I. The, uh, the the garage was a perfect example. Some of the change orders we we requested, right? Yeah. And I can remember them specifically, and some of them to know. Listen, it's out. These some of these things are just out of our control. And the alternative, no, because if we did earlier, yeah, but if we had done it earlier, then we would have anticipated right. that this is something that was going to continue throughout the. Campus. Sorry, uh, Steph, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> it was, I she said, voted for uh, Mayor Leonard. Yeah, I, I will say. Um, well, before I, I vote, I just say for the record that I'm, I'm, I have some concerns also, but I don't believe that M and J Construction is the reason of those concerns. It, we retained a company, told them to do a job, they did the job. Um, we have to pay them. That's not, you know, that's not good business. Um, and if there's fault, then we can always we can always go back and, and get any money if there's any fault on, on the party. I, and I definitely so, want to look at that. Is know, that four? But, but I'm in four. Thank you. Right. Four. Um, it passes four two. Okay, but before we move on, we yeah. next Randy next, um, next month. month. I want yeah. a report so that, and I want our Randy, attorneys to look can I run it by council? Run it by council. I want to see if there's really Let's, anything. Stephanie, just so you know, yeah. I can, I, the 
the company wants to come in and honestly wants to come and do a full right. briefing to the council on the whole project when it's when it's done and we're practically done. Well, they're now, in so. for a funny. They're, they're in for a treat. Yeah, I'm just saying. All right, I don't want to see them next month. No. Okay. All right, number fourteen. Must have one more around. A discussion requested by Mayor Leonard on a possible community pool for residents and approval to, st uh, to direct staff to come up with an option of yeah, where I'll, to build it. I'll be very brief on this. Um, I've talked to um, staff, uh, talked to the manager about this. All this is is the concept of having staff look at the, the costs, look at locations. Um, you know, I know I mentioned 95th Street. Um, there may be a better location, maybe a location where maybe there's an opportunity for a public-private partnership. There's di many different things that can come to light. Um, the concept is that until we say, let's look at it, it's not, it's not something really that, that's on their minds. Um, they may come back and it's cost prohibitive, or there's no great location, or not enough land, and, and it's not feasible, but at least we, we tried. From my understanding, this is the first time we've, we've brought up um, actually um, talking about it so I don't want to promise anything that yes we're going to have a pool or no we're not going to have a pool but the concept of at least having staff look at options and bring it back to the council is probably the most appropriate way and that's what I'm humbly asking our colleagues to do so um, if we can have uh, maybe part of the plan will be M&J construction under <laughs> <laughs> for a million dollars not just right I mean there's just a drop in the bucket compared to the 18 million bucks yeah there you go the hardest thing on it yeah both that's, that's a different that's a different so uh, we lecture. have um, do you guys want to talk about it first you want to have public comment because we have, we have a few people that have been waiting the whole meeting so okay well, well, public we, comment I think okay okay public comment Mayor Limber, Linda Zilber <laughs> I give me two for two. A little history of the town. Originally, we had a pool, but that became the town hall and parking. Uh, but at the time that we had Albert Pick Motel Hotel and a Bay Harbor Inn, we had the use of their pool with the Red Cross. So, you know, what you decide is fine, but in the meantime, we have two hotels going up, and perhaps we can make an arrangement, as we did then, to have uh, a Red Cross person there and give swimming lessons when a parent is with the child to X amount of children. That is something that we did for years, and I, I thought that uh, we might be able to ask uh, either hotel or both because it's not only the cost of the pool it's the maintenance you could never leave the pool alone without somebody being there you have to have bathrooms there so there's a lot that goes along with it and I just thought in the meantime you might want to ask uh, these hotels um, I'm talking I, well I'm talking to Miami Dade Community College um, to see you summer to get kids who do not know how to swim some swim lessons there so I have been in contact with them for the last week and they're coming back to talk to me and then talk to the council about maybe having some kind of an arrangement where parents can take their kids there, there, there. to right. the pool to be able to get free um, day north what day about north. What about FIU? I mean, they're much closer. And they right. I don't have. Well, I, I, I have a relationship with Miami Dade Community College. I know the swim. I'll talk to somebody over at okay. FIU. That would really be great. Really, we, we, for our summer camp, we did use. For our summer camp, we used FIU's pool, and we did meet with the person there. So we have a contact there. So that would be great because there's a lot of kids in right. this community right. who do not know how to swim, and if we can, and I think if you contact Sally Hayman, there is she also has funds specifically designed right. for kids who don't know how to swim. So if there, you know, parents, and then if you could put it in the newsletter, that would be great. Once you get FIU on board, to be able to get these parents the opportunity for their kids until we hopefully have a. a big enough group maybe we can arrange the transportation mm -hmm. send mm -hmm. the bus shuttle. over there so. uh, shuttle that's been and there you go right See? but um I, i'll be more than happy to talk to my contacts with fiu i have great relationships there too so uh, mark's a friend um next we have victor maya
Victor Maya. Uh, I'm sure if Joel was, st was still here, he would gladly okay. and graciously volunteer the use of the Bay Harbor Grand Beach Hotel uh, <laughs> to the citizens of our town to use the pool in return for allowing him to start construction at 8 a.m. Um, for the last uh, two years, two and a half years, three years, uh, I have talked about, you know, at various points in times at, at these meetings about using the land next to our community center uh, to to build a sort of a, a big barn gym. Uh, even one time, if you go back and listen to the tape, I mentioned you can even put a gym and a pool on top of it. Um, and all I got was it's too expensive. The land is, uh, you know, needs to be used to be paid for the uh, garage. Uh, garage. Uh, chirp, chirp, chirp. Ignore, ignore, ignore. I think even our town manager said that it would cost eleven million dollars just to put a big barn, a basic barn with a gym. I think the community would benefit greatly by having, you know, a sort of a big, huge gym. You can put a pool on the top. You can create all of these wonderful facilities. It's something that uh, we've been talking about, or at least I have been talking about for a long time, only to be met with, you know, massive resistance, uh, you know, from, you know, this council over and over and over again. Now, a year and a few months away from a re-election, all of a sudden we have the proposal from our uh, mayor that maybe we should consider a pool. Well, I think it's a great idea. Um, I think we should have a pool. We should have a big barn. We should take advantage of the land that we already have. Uh, and uh, let's go forward. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mar Marlene, I have to get to the city. <laughs> all right. Uh, Emilis Flores. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. 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 Um, Gabriella Gonzalez. You guys all write like doctors. You're all together. Okay. okay. Are, you, are you Tatiana? Yeah. Okay. okay. Come on. Perfect. Well, you get two I, minutes. I will leave in for nine years. Yeah, you have to write your, you have to your name. name. Oh, 1140-99th Street. Right. And um, yeah. 9900 West Bay Harbor Drive. Okay. So I've been living for nine years in the city, and thank you very much to whoever is responsible because over the years it's getting better and better for our kids. A pool will be really nice because some of the buildings where we live don't have a pool. And, you know, we go to the beach, and it's nice, the beach, and sometimes, especially on the summer when we get back from work like at 6 p.m., it would be nice to go for a couple of hours just walk to the pool. And I can volunteer on Saturdays to watch the pool for four hours if you need to. <laughs> yeah, me too. So we just think it will be a great thing for, for there's many kids in the island. And we both, yes. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Amy, come on up. Hi, I'm Amy Silverman. Happy New Year. Uh, 1050 93rd Street here in Bay Harbor. I am a lifelong swimmer who is lapsed because there is no place for me to swim. Mm. Um, <laughs> occasionally I go to Normandy, but I go in off hours because I have two young children. Um, I'm very pro pool in general. I've spoken to Mayor Leonard about it every time I've ever seen him. Um, but as a competition swimmer, I'm interested in a pool where I can actually swim laps. We have a lovely pool at our condo. Uh, which we use. And my concern, just having been in Miami Beach and I commute up to Hollywood, is that a lot of the pools, um, because the communities are small, actually can't support the hours for working people. So a lot of the pools aren't open certain days, aren't open late at night, which is how I end up at Normandy when I go, because Miami Beach is the only community that can actually support late hours. Um, my preference would be for us to make the right decision for our community and investigate a continued partnership with Surfside. I know that in the past they have not been open to that and that there's lots of history perhaps there, um, but they have a beautiful facility and we would be much better served by investing our money, I believe, as a community rather than building at a completely new pool which will be a tax for us to maintain forever and ever. It's so expensive. Um, and working with our community. All of our kids go to school together, um, and it would be nice for all of our kids to be able to swim together as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have um, Amy Small. Small. There we go. 
And while you're coming up, let me just say for the record, um, I also um, attended a, a public meeting in the town of Surfside with our town manager and our parks and recreation director with the hopes of having some synergy in regards to the community center and um, that uh, it wasn't uh, let's just say they, they it wasn't well received. No, it's, uh, no, it wasn't. So I'm I, I, for uh, let's see, yeah. Before you start your comment, Bob, can you define for me continued partnership with <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that ever existed. In yeah, it's, it's, uh, maybe in the 1980s, <laughs> 1800s. Believe me, believe me, believe me, we tried. I'm sorry, I just had this. Well, um, 9120 West Bay Harbor. Um, I mean, I basically want to talk about that because we. I lived in Bell Harbor for nine years now, Bay Harbor for the past two years. And I have two young kids. We go to the Surfside pool all the time, and we have to pay money, and we have to go with our friends. And um, my kids, I would love them to do be on a swim team. And I, I don't know the history with Surfside, but I think it would be such a beautiful thing if we could all come together and be able to share our resource. I mean, share the pools and the parks and, you know, the events. So I, really, I love the idea of a community pool. I really do, but I think the larger issue of the three towns coming together is, you know, I would like to see that in, in the pool. So that's all I really want to say. I don't know the history, um, but I would really advocate for that. Um, I think, you know. So we're very open to working, and we have in the past, so, you know, I know you don't know, but we have sent our town manager when they were building their um, community center. We offered to pay into that community center to be able to use their pool and beach, and we were unfortunately turned down. And we have extended our hands out many times and are always open to working with Surfside, I mean, and Ball Harbor. And Miami, we, we tried Miami Shores. With we did. Yeah. We tried Miami Shores. We still hope for Miami Shores. Worst, and that's another avenue, for, especially for this. That's the, for this summer. I mean, besides the pool, we could maybe have a conversation with my um, <coughs> Shores. They did it for Surfside a year or two. Maybe they're open into having a relationship with us and allowing until we work this summer, to be this summer for the kids to go to the you know the play pool and for the adults to be able I mean I'm a swimmer too I swim I swim at Miami Shores um, and that's another option for you is the shores maybe we can in the meantime we could definitely reach out to Miami Shores they're yeah. very nice to talk to Try it again. We tried, try it again. We tried before, but we maybe for this summer we can do something yeah. in Sorry. which we can do something so. for our kids so that they have something right now. Yeah. Is um, I don't know if I can ask this question sure. here, but is, what are the reasons that Surfside so close to? Uh, yeah, I, 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 we don't, let's just say we're not yeah. going to guess. Let, let, let give them. But you know, I can just give you one example, um, and just to correct, slightly correct what Stephanie had said. Um, you know, we had made overtures that we were interested in participating in their community center. The offer that they gave us, and this was years and years ago, was that we'd have to participate equally in the construction of the, of the community center, which was expensive, as you can imagine, but they would not have given us any equity in the project. All right. Okay, so it was a real, like, one program. It, was, it was incredibly over-inflated pricing for what we were receiving in return. And they, you know, and, and Surfside, you know, God bless them, wonderful people, hardworking people, have had a pattern of being very protective of their assets and, you know, you know their things. And really, they, you know, like, if you, if you use an analogy of little kids, they don't like to share their toys. Right. Well, I see that as a, you know, person that lives in Bay Harbor. When I try to go to the surf, you know, we try to go to the Surfside events. It's a tough. Right. 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 right, right, right. So, yeah. but I don't see that on the Bay Harbor end. You know, it's very open. Right. So I, I just, I, you know, maybe I like the idea actually of of a gym. I mean, maybe if we could offer them something that they don't have, something like that would make more sense to them. I, I don't know. Just right. a suggestion, but. The idea of a partnership would really be my first choice. 
I, I'll just say that, that, you know, the offer, the original offer, what, what I proposed um, to Surfside was, I, I thought was, believe it or not, originally was not, had nothing to do with the pool actually. Originally, the concept was there was a, there was a child that was um, hit by a car last year. And it was a Surfside, a Surfside kid was 10 years old. And they met a victim from, um, from 95th Street. And he went to Jackson and everything turned out okay. Um, you know, but it kind of got in my mind that, you know, what is the kid doing outside? Why is he not in a community center? It's really hard to negotiate when you don't have a community center or anything to kind of like negotiate with. So we ha I had to wait, you know, and for our community center to open. When it, once it opened, it's, you know, it was when it kind of really came in and said, listen, I, I really want to do something great as far as for the kids. And the proposal was very simple. On school days, um, that children in Bay Harbor, Bell Harbor, and Surfside have a safe place to go. So in other words, our kids can go to your community center, your kids can go to our community center only after school and school days, not on holidays, not on teacher planning days, not in the summer, just so that way kids have a safe place to go. There's no reason for a kid to be on the street, in other words. Now, mind you, Surfside has a, has a rule that if you're under 12 years old, you can't go in the pool anyway without a parent. So it's not like all the kids are going to run over to Surfside and use the pool all of a sudden. Um, I think I was berated for 45 minutes from one of the board members. It was about, is that about right? Yeah. So, you know, and I'm sorry because, uh, you know, I have a great working relationship. Not a council member. No, it wasn't a council member. It was, it was the planning zone. Not the, um, the parks and rec. Right. But, but I was, but, you know, I've asked that the council, the commission bring it up and they said that it has to go before the committee. And... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying. I'm not going to give up. But I, I don't want you to think that that, that I, I want to just spend a million dollars without going to our partners. Because right. otherwise, we do have some good things that we have worked together on. It's, it's a strange dynamic. Honestly, it's a strange it dynamic. Right. And they are often militant. And this is not just the leadership. This is the layman. They're like militant about protecting, you know, their assets and their exclusivity. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of our... Uh, assets are open to the public because we've accepted um, grant money to construct part of it or most of it. Um, see, they didn't do that in their community center. They used their own funds to construct it. And they have the right to make it exclusive. Yeah. All right. So and it's a very, let me tell you, it's a very, it's a very touchy point. Yeah, I see so, that. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Francis Newhut. There you go. Francis Newha, 1060 King Concourse. As I previously stated, um, I have had experience with elections, and elections must be coming up, including yours, Jordan, next year. And every time they have something that's just thrown in that makes everybody happy. And sometimes it's things that they know are impossible or you're never going to give to the community. And as I recall, where the 96-room hotel is, go is being built was supposed to be a park, or our waterfront park. Did we ever get it? No. And now we have a swimming pool. And the worst part about it is we know that in our comprehensive plan and our flum map, and Mr. Miller's right here, where are you going to put the parking for the commercial district? I have the map right here. Our parking lots are full. And on the comprehensive plan, okay, which is here, we had an interlocal agreement with our comprehensive plan. Now they are building on our basketball courts. We do not have our basketball courts. When is this happening, by the way? Because I see the children playing there all the time from the school. So to do a pool. Excuse me, that's where the pool's going? No. No. And my you, clock you're is running. The town, the town okay, well, I don't want to really talk about that right. because in the comprehensive plan, we were supposed to get three tennis courts and a ballpark. These kids are running around. The doors are locked. Unless there's an after-school program, and a lot of the Surfside kids are in those programs, there is nothing for our, our, meaning the town, our community. We are the dumping ground for everyone, for Bell Harbor, for Surfside. So you can say what you want, but we know 
We know that this is an impossible thing. The insurance is impossible. This has been brought up a hundred times. I would love a swimming pool. I'm a WSI instructor. I see these kids running around that don't know how to swim. That's the worst thing for an instructor to see is a kid who can't swim. So don't don't tempt these people with your fakeness. Thank you. So All right. So I I don't show those pools. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who came out. You waited till you know almost the end of the meeting to express yourselves, and I'm sure I have, and many of my colleagues have also received calls and emails from both sides. You know, um, we love amenities. I'm a swimmer also. I'm a WSI instructor. I was a lifeguard. I grew up on Miami Beach going to the ocean and going to Flamingo Park Pool. Because even when you have a little pool in your building, like you said, you can't do laps. There aren't programs there. And in a perfect world, I think we all want to provide every amenity under the sun that the constituents would ask for. But we have to balance that, as you know, with our fiduciary responsibility, and you said it very well, um, Amy, and I know you're a fan of the pools, that you understand clearly the, the budgeting problem. So I support asking the staff to come up with some options, like is on the agenda. I'd just like to add a few details that uh, if we can possibly get a survey of how many children live on the island, maybe from the school, that would help us determine who the users would be. That would be helpful to me later on if that's something we can do. And I don't think we really need to spend any money doing a survey or a study for this at this point or getting any kind of a design because we have limited uh, land that we're looking at. And I think we could probably call a, a similar sized town and ask them how much a facility costs, what the <coughs> annual budget is, and then if there's any impact on our insurance, um, you know, what kind of liability that we could have because that's pretty big. And then uh, you already mentioned um, alternate uses and uh, maybe, you know, we, we discussed Surfside at nauseum. Miami Shores is great. FIU has an Olympic pool. That's a great option. It's very close. We already have that as a target for the bus to, to go. And then I don't know if anyone has ever talked to anyone at the county about the potential of Hallover having a pool there. If they're starting to build new facilities, maybe they'd have a master plan. That might take a little longer, but that might just be another option. That's, you know, a huge space over there. And, uh, you know, also some of the teams that they have, like at Miami Country Day, I think they have uh, different swim teams. And I'm not so sure if you join the team that you can't use the pool. You may have to pay a different fee structure, but. So Miami Shores, if you want to be on the swim team, yeah. you can join uh, Miami Shores swim team for kids. Um, and, you know, it's a different fee structure. It's just that I don't know. Any, right. I, I, I go but, and then if you're high school age, you know, the right. high school so has a team right. and they have a water polo team. So we're, we're looking more at the younger kids. And I think it is critically important that the younger kids learn how to swim so, and the best way is in a group program. Right. So Miami Shores does have swim programs for their um, community, but what I was looking for is more of a, you know, a, a swim program, especially for the little, little ones, almost like a prevent, you know, for Brent preventive measures, like safety measures, and really there's a lot of small little kids whose parents don't have the opportunity or don't know how to teach them, and I think that if we teach them at a young age, because, you know, they're going to go to the beach, and they're going to go, they're going to see the pools and the condos, and they're going to walk, you know, kindergarten kids are going to walk, you know, they might walk in. I prefer so to, to be apartment. a friend's apartment to be proactive than have to wait for something to happen first. Well, so. like I said, I support this early stage investigation, it doesn't cost anything, it can't hurt to ask, and I think we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can look at other small cities and get their uh, comparison. Great. Any other? All right. Um, can I just have a voice vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? All right. Guys, have it. Thank you so much. All right. Number 15 was pulled. Number 16. Discussion requested by Council Member Reed to establish a location in the town for recognition of former council members. 
Kelly. Okay. Um, we've been hashing this out now um, for almost a year. It was April of last year that Doris Moreno passed away. She was a sitting council member at the time. And uh, we thought for a little while that we might have a park. Just if you knew Doris, you know that she was a resident for decades. She sent her child to Bay Harbor Elementary. She served on the PTA. She served on our design review board, one of the, the first one that we had, and also on the parks committee. She loved the parks. She was present and on the committee when the 92nd Street Park uh, ribbon cutting ceremony took place. And uh, she was very much in favor of art and parks in the town. So what I recommend, and I consulted with her sister and her son, and we thought we might have an opportunity on the West Island overlooking the causeway. She was trying to get something on the causeway. That's been a little controversial and not quite ready. So we've agreed, uh, I've agreed with the family, that a great location for a very simple, tasteful plaque on a park bench would be the 92nd Street Park. And uh, Jesse, her son, asked that it would say something very simple, like, in memory of Councilwoman Doris Morano. Well, I, I have a question. Okay. The agenda item was for recognition to former town council members. I thought we agreed that we were going to talk about doing something for all the town council members that have passed. Um, and, you know, that we weren't going to leave any... any well, matter. that was not my intention, and I asked for this to be a future agenda item, and I think someone else said, can we talk about others? And, of oh. course, I'm always open to that. So I'm not... No, I am talking about, at, at this moment, a very simple plaque on a park bench for Doris. And I, I'm not sure how much it could be. I doubt it would exceed $1,000. If we have to budget for that, that's fine. But this is somebody who less than a year ago died while in office here. Um, in the future, I have some other ideas to recognize some others. And we just learned today that another former mayor passed away. Um, in the past, I've also mentioned that it might be a good idea for us to have a very simple policy on naming things. So that could also come along and be a good idea. But at, at this time, I would, I'd like to uh, hear some commentary to see if uh, I have any support for Doris's plaque. Yeah, uh, Isaac. Yeah, I, I think, again, this discussion is a little bit premature because I think um, what the council, if it so desires, should be discussing is our policy yeah. on how to memorialize deceased councilmen council members rather than just focusing on one particular council member who unfortunately passed away um, you know while she was in office uh, and I think if I'm not mistaken I think Peter Lynch, Peter Lynch died while he was in office and yeah. if you look into the conference room where all the council the former council members opposed it anything any all the folks with a black black ribbon on their frame um, also died I, I don't know how many of them died in office but um, you know, I think what we really should be discussing is what our, you know, policy will be or procedure will be when we have a deceased council person. I mean, um, I, no, I agree. And, and I think, you know, to make it non-political, I think if we did the same thing for every council member, our former vice mayor, former mayor that, that has passed, I think that that would, again, set that tone. Um, you know, I don't think regardless of what, you know, uh, Council Member Morano served this many meetings or Mayor Lynch served this many years. It, it doesn't matter. It, you served this town. You passed away. We, we should do something. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see what staff can come together and see if they can come up with an idea of something tasteful for us to do. Um, that that is regardless of, of any preference or anything that if you serve this town um, and 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 pass away over time then you know that that's something that that is deserved because because you volunteered your time and I and I think that that's regardless of any any belief on any individual it, it should be the same for everyone um, you know that's just my my opinion uh, is that something that anyone so, no. is that, are you in favor of that Josh? A general, okay. a general 
idea as far as how to uh, memorialize, memorialize, <laughs> <laughs> memorialize uh, for everybody. Yeah, I think it's a general practice would be a good idea. I'd like to put something up for, with Doris, and I'd like to have her included with other people in the past, but I think it's time to do it quick. Um, you know, what I'd like to do is whatever we end up doing for everybody or for one or whatever it is, you know, it's still very, you know, very strong in the memory of, of Joyce's family, and I'd like to do it while they see it's still fresh. Yeah, mine as well. So, so, staff, could you guys come back with something ne next month and come up with some ideas as far as what we can do? Location, yeah. It just, it, you know, it doesn't... I think, like, the, the start would be just to find out how much a bronze plaque is, you know, with a few words on it and maybe some examples from other cities. Yes, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would like, personally, just, I, I think, some type of memorial, you know, I mean, a memorial is exactly what it is, you know, I mean, if, if you have to invest a little bit of money and do something that's maybe a little bit, a little bit larger, but something that where we can put the names of all can be a former members. You can be a here uh, in town hall. Right. I mean, well, we, whatever well, we have. A park. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not, uh, no, I know we have the other thing. We have one park. <laughs> right, but it's, I, I agree that a park is a nicer location, I'm just yeah. saying. It's, so, so, come back, sorry, come back next month. Also, wait. So, you want to that for, for Wednesday? Or? Oh, yeah, you should. Sure that's actually a um, I would like to um, make sure we give a platter or something in, in you know, from the town he, uh, for the mayor who passed. Of course, we always, yeah, just an offer, whatever, you know, what we normally do for, for former elected officials. Chief, were you here during that? Does, you know, Ed Tablin, who's a former council member and mayor, he was here, passed away. He passed away, yeah. Um, today or yesterday? Yeah, I think so. So I think they, what Stephanie just said is maybe we'll fly the flags at half staff for a couple of days or whatever the protocol is for that. Yeah. Ron, you can do. We'll do it tonight. Yeah, do it tonight, yeah, Thank you. All right. So we're we're yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Just, just yeah. before we go on, um, you know, I think it would be important for staff to bring back, uh, you know, I guess their ideas on some type of memorial. And I think it might be a good idea to find out what other towns do. Yeah. Um, to honor the uh, the elected officials that have passed away. So we can do something similar rather than just randomly picking a spot and saying, here, put a plaque for, for Doris. Well, it's like the park. You know, we talked about it when we were talking about the 98th Street Park and the dedication to Officer Winters. And I know we mentioned, I, I suggested other locations, but there is no policy currently. I think it would be prudent to have some kind of a policy. Because I think the policy now that we approved in the resolution was this is our policy, is that you just bring it up when you have the idea. It's been done about naming this facility. It's been done about naming the park. And uh, we just named a room in the library about it. So uh, I really I don't think it's that far out of the ordinary for what we've done. I think you're right. All right. All right. So we're going to do that. All right. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Move it. A second. All right. We are adjourned at uh, 9.24 p.m. Oh. Uh -huh.